The story begins with a hero who knew that risking his life was extremely stupid. In Japan in 2034, it is difficult to give up everything to try to achieve something. Work, sports, hobbies, gambling. But he was the one who was simply overwhelmed when he reached the top. He literally risked everything, giving it all up except the bare essentials, food, sleep, and bathroom breaks. The young man did not attend school and the like, even as an adult he did not work enough. An absolute, flawless title of first place, recognized by everyone in the world, revered by everyone almost as if the first place winners were God. The most powerful ruler in history who never suffered a single defeat. It was he, our undeniable hero. He had the world rank number one by a wide margin in a VR MMORPG with full immersion called Mobius Online. Everything he achieved in life and everything he had in this life, today it has all become history. After all, one day his main character Seven was hacked and removed from the game. And not only his own data, everything, starts backups and the like. He wasn't the only one affected, there were 3,000 players, 3,000 of the highest rated players. The criminal was one of the high ranking players. The young man heard on the news that he committed this ridiculous crime out of envy of other players who occupied a higher rank. There is no way he could ridiculously perform something like a 3,000 player character data hack. It was an act committed out of unwillingness to achieve more. This is an announcement from the administrators of Mobius Online. They couldn't restore any of the affected characters. The only compensation they could offer was accelerated leveling when creating a new character and assistance in court. Hearing this, the young man was very upset, thinking that no matter how many times people asked and raided their headquarters, their answer was the same. Our hero was so shocked by this event that his body could not stand it and the young man even felt sick. He couldn't bring himself to do anything. Nothing came to mind. All he could do was breathe while lying on his bed. He thought about how he would never see his number one status again. Realizing that he could not remain in this state forever, the next moment he thought that he could simply die. When he decided that he would just die, the next moment he found himself in another world. Kingdom of Castall, Capital, Main Street of Vincent. He realized that it was Mobius Online. Grocery Store Icicle. Our hero was seen by a girl standing on the street and thinking about when he logged in. At that moment, she said that he should have moved out of her way, because he was simply occupying the area in front of her store. Looking at her, our hero thought that it was the girl from the icicle poster, Ice Chan. He was used to hearing her voice, but he had never heard such remarks before. Our hero thought to himself that there might have been an update while he was sleeping. The next moment, the girl, seeing the young man who turned to her, was very embarrassed and apologized to him. Because perhaps he wanted to buy something in her store, she asked. At this moment, watching the girl, our hero realized that the voice suddenly became gentle and the girl even blushed. It was not an exaggeration to call this update divine. The next moment the young man was talking about how cute she was. Hearing this, the girl became embarrassed and then looked at our hero. The girl asked what he was saying. The next moment she ran away to her shop. Looking at his reflection, our hero thought about how wonderful the behavior was written. Most likely some kind of system of mutual understanding was introduced at a time when he was not registered. At that moment, he looked at his reflection and thought that this was the wrong character. In the end, this is not Savon, it was probably Second. Second is an alternate character that he made at the same time as his main character C1. He still hasn't trained him, he's just a character whose left XP fell asleep. Thinking that it was hopeless and that he didn't have the willpower to level up again, he decided that he should just log out and that's it. The next moment he realized that he could not do this, because the settings menu did not open. Then turning his head to the sides, thought about that, that perhaps it was a mistake with leaving the game. He couldn't press the button for an emergency exit to reality. But then he couldn't understand, because there was no reality anymore, thinking that why could he forget about it, because he should already be dead. Then the young man wondered why he ended up in the Mobian. He died in his world and was reborn in Mobius Online, our hero thought but was sure that he wanted this with all his heart. It would be great if he could be born in the world of Mobian. But if it were possible, I would prefer to be born in the world of the game. Even if he spoke, these were rather pitiful last words. Thinking that it was unreal, it simply could not be true. The next moment our hero pinched his face, thinking that it was quite painful and could not understand. After all, if it was in the game, if Ice Chan's linear remarks have one reason, if it was that he could not leave the game, and it was connected, he could accept it if it was true. The next moment, our hero thought that if it was true, then he was reborn in the world of the game. Then he would simply be incredibly happy. And he thanked the universe for giving him such a chance. After all, it was simply amazing for the young man. 
Forgetting about himself, he danced like crazy for almost an hour, making strange sounds. More than at his happiest moment in life, that is, when he took first place in the world, he was probably several dozen times, several hundred times or several one thousand times happier. At this moment our hero was arrested. Turning to the girl who worked in the store, the officers asked if she was sure that this was the guy she was talking about. The girl, looking at the young man, said that it was him, because he was causing noise in front of the store, so it was necessary to pick him up. Our hero did not expect this at all and therefore ended up in the third nightly order section. There the knights turned to him, asking why the guy did something like that, to which the young man replied that he was just a little excited. These guys were the three night order of the Crystal Kingdom. But in layman's terms, they were the police and he was now being interrogated at the station. Our hero listened to the knight who stood in front of her and it was a girl who said that, judging by his appearance, he was a nobleman, asking what kind of family the young man was with and why he was alone. Then what happened to his companion? Our hero said that he was not a nobleman. At that moment he saw a beautiful knight in front of him in all her beauty. This was a beautiful noble female knight. She was not just cute, she was incomparable. He had never met such a beautiful NPS before, looking at the girl and wondering if this meant that she was unique in this world. Noticing this, she looked at the guy very menacingly and asked what he wanted from her, because his noble rights do not mean much to them three knightly orders. The girl reported that whoever it was, if he breaks the law, it was a crime. A crime is evil and evil will be condemned. Protecting good citizens was their responsibility, and that was justice, she informed, knocking on the table in front of our hero. Having asked the young man to lay out, saying that he was a corrupt nobleman, and he already had strong evidence, our hero tried to explain to her that he was not a nobleman, but he understood that it was useless, this girl could not even argue. At that moment, seeing that the young man was refusing, she said that he did not give her a choice. At that moment she grabbed her sword and seeing this, our hero was very frightened. The young man asked the girl to talk. The girl, hearing this, asked if he really couldn't have told her this at the very beginning and asked him to tell him his name and occupation. Our hero reported that his name was Second, he was an adventurer. At that moment, the girl, hearing this, said that the young man was a liar. Our hero didn't know what he was supposed to do. Then at that moment the girl said that this outfit was so well made that it could not belong to an adventurer, and that the young man's costume looked very expensive. The girl looked very intently at the young man, which most embarrassed him. Our hero realized that his equipment was probably to blame. It's not as nice as the one on his main character, but it's a rare item, so it looks nice. So it was because of her that he was mistaken for a nobleman, the young man thought, and that this was a serious problem. The enmity between the lower divisions of the Third Order of Knighthood and the nobles was a well-known story. She accumulated grievances under the higher divisions, who were deeply in cahoots with the nobles. She is basically a constable, filled with a sense of justice. Judging by her appearance, it could be said that the girl had more of it than the average person. Our hero understood that this was bad, because he had nothing to confirm his status. Having thought about what he already needed to do, at that moment the girl began again to ask the young man to quickly lay out what he was thinking about. Our hero understood that this irritated him very much. At that moment they were interrupted by a man who came to their door. Hitting the girl on the head, he told Sylvia that she had behaved very badly. Addressing our hero, the man said that this girl was impolite and he would conduct the interrogation in her place. Having sat down at the table, the man apologized for the girl, because they suspected that the young man might be deliberately interfering with business so they would first have to ask him to tell in detail about his social status and intentions. The young man said that his name was Second. He was 17 years old and an adventurer. His real name was Sato Shikairo. He was 28 in fact, and he was single and unemployed. In any case, he was 17 years old when he created this character, so the young man gave this figure, and not his real age. At that moment, the man said that he saw that witnesses reported that the young man was dancing and making strange sounds in front of the grocery store, asking why our hero was doing all this. The young man said that he had not intentionally gotten carried away and asked to be forgiven. Then the man asked the young man if there was a reason for this. The young man reported that he did not plan to create problems for the store. He has no evil intentions now. At this moment the young man was thinking about how crazy this feeling was. This made him fully aware that he was now in the right company. The man said that he understood that the young man claimed that he did not intentionally interfere with business. Our hero explained that of course it was so and later he apologized to the owner of the store and was released. In any case, our hero will have to repay the debt to society. Compensation for Icicle cost him 150,000 SL. 
for such a ridiculous amount in the game they wouldn't even be able to afford good level armor. Now he had a tiny 2 billion SL in his account. He immediately changed into an attractive rare outfit that he was accidentally mistaken for a nobleman. And he has matching full body armor that he bought. Its budget is 2.3 billion SL. So far it is a mystery to him whether it was a lot or a little. And our hero thought that for some reason it turned out that the prices for things would not be the same as those of the Mobian. He knew that he had to quickly look at the value of this world's currency. The perfect time our hero thought that he would have lunch and it would be convenient and easy to find out the prices for food or overnight accommodation. The next moment, looking at the building, I thought that this place looked good and thought that they even had a bar on the first floor. Going inside, he was greeted by a girl and our hero decided to find out how much one night cost. The girl repeated his question. Our hero then thought that she had the same feeling as a reaction when he first met Ice Chan. The girl at the reception behaves very suspiciously, and the next moment she said that it would cost 7,000 per day, including breakfast and dinner, if without food, then 4,000. Hearing this price, our hero couldn't believe that it was so cheap and then the armor set he bought was of insanely high quality. Our hero reported that he would be left without food for five days. The next moment, the girl handed him the keys and, touching his hand, she became very embarrassed, and then looked at our hero. The young man tried to understand what kind of feeling he was experiencing at that moment. Our hero, going downstairs, decided that he wanted to drink something. At this moment, all the people who were sitting in the tavern looked carefully at the young man. Now it became clear to him that he stood out very much from the rest, especially for these girls with their passionate looks. Our hero thought that most likely the fault was his avatar, the result of purchasing a limited edition avatar. He was exceptionally handsome, even if a normal character were handsome in an online game, no one would look at him. But that was a completely different story if it turned out to be the real world. In this body, he was beginning to become fully aware of the reality that this place was no longer part of an online game. The pleasant shiver that ran down his spine involuntarily brought a smile to his face. Our hero thought that his efforts here would not be useless. In any case, in this higher world, where he assured that there is nothing else beyond it. Remembering all these terrible words that were spoken to him about this, the young man decided that that world and reasonable arguments continued to press on him to this day. But now the discontent in the very depths of his heart was negated. Our hero began to laugh again, because everything was decided. Here he would again become number one in this world. Our hero got so carried away last night that he had a very bad headache. After all, drinking all night was not a very good idea, because the young man was completely unaccustomed to alcohol. But it was all to celebrate his rebirth into this world. At that moment he realized that he even had a hangover. Getting out of bed, he thought that now this place was no longer a game, it was his reality. At this moment, our hero was looking out of his window, examining his new world of habitat. He had a question that is now on his agenda. It was about getting the necessary skills, because Mobian has many skills that are considered necessary. And ignoring these skills is out of the question. Our hero thought, sitting on the bed after he had just woken up. The nature of leveling up in Mobian is built on a system of experience points and he needed experience to learn skills and also raise his stats. Gaining experience was extremely important and gaining experience was very easy. Experience is gained by killing monsters or completing crusade quests. Skills cover a huge variety of combat techniques, magical abilities and crafts. Each skill has a ranking system, first from 16th to 1st class, then from 1st to 9th level, and there is also a special rank for developing the skill title. In addition, he needs to gain experience points to increase his skill level. In addition, the method of increasing statistics differs, depending on the type of buildup that the hero chose as the main one when creating the character. Of course, you'll need tons of experience to increase your stats. Walking into the dining room at that moment, our hero asked the girl for curry and rice, thinking that it brought back his memories. The type of buildup of this second character is the same as that of Seven. His character is a multifaceted type. When it comes to gaining experience for skills, his stats grow equally without any deviation. The good news was that Second was fit to reach number one in the world. But the bad news is that he was a jack of all trades. But there was no chance of becoming an expert in one area. While our hero was waiting for his food, he thought about all this. The next moment, a girl came up to him and brought him curry and rice. Our hero continued to argue that instead of being a character of the same type, where the graph of all his statistics is stretched in favor of one, he could flawlessly raise all of his stats at once. He could say that in the vast majority of cases it is good to be developed in everything. 
but in exchange for his initial development, more intense than that of other character types. If that was the case, then he had no choice but to use it all and thought that he needed this method. The next moment he came to a store that specialized in potions. Addressing the sellers, our hero showed a bottle in his hand, saying that he needed bottles of detoxifying high-quality restoration potions, all that was available. At this moment, the sellers looked at our hero very strangely, apologizing, including storage. The purchase would cost him an exorbitant amount. Our hero was asking at that moment how many potions they had. The man reported that at the moment there are approximately 630. Our hero, smiling, said that he buys everything they have. Hearing this, both sellers were very surprised and looked at our hero with surprise. The young man thought that it was a two-stage enhanced potion with the effects of detoxification, dispersal, and restoration. The cost of the potion was 120,000 SL for each bottle. In total, the young man produced 75.6 million words. The man, having placed all the vials in front of our hero, apologized to him for keeping him waiting. The young man, smiling, said that he needed another 9,000 of these potions and asked them to prepare them for him, leaving. At this moment, the sellers were surprised and shocked again. Our hero bought himself these potions for cash and, after payment, put them in his inventory. Now what he was going to do with these high-quality potions, he wanted to do what used to be called DK Tactics. This is a clever way to gain initial experience. This is taken from the old 8-bit game Dinosaur Quest, where heroes deal damage to enemies who have evasion and kill them. I know this trick can give you a lot of initial experience. In other words, throwing a potion at zombie vipers, no matter who it is, a newbie or a 3-year-old guy. Anyone can destroy them in this way, because this method was previously used by twinks and high-ranking players. Because all this costs an insane amount of money. To gain the required amount of experience, you need about 10,000 bottles of potion. Approximate cost 1.2 billion SL. The only one who is able to prepare that kind of money without batting an eyelid, as one would expect. These are those who had the main character on the side. Therefore, DK tactics should be the ideal method for farming experience, but this is strictly for the start. It will no longer work when a person becomes an experienced player. At that moment, our hero went to the stable and, having arrived there, they showed him the horse that our hero had chosen, calling this horse the Seventh Emperor. At this moment, our hero thought that he could not imagine that the day would ever come when he would resort to this method. Almost two hours of riding separates it from the royal capital. He was sure that this was a good hunting ground where he had arrived. After all, inside a large cave nearby there is a mine, but there was not a single soul here. Arriving at the mine, our hero thought, but perhaps the tactics were already known to the whole world. Or maybe the potions are too expensive, so no one does it. Or maybe there are not so many beginners, for him it was still a mystery. But there was no one here, our hero looked around and thought. Our hero thought that he could hunt everyone, that's what he wanted. Seeing the monsters nearby, I decided that in the end they looked 100 times more disgusting than in the game, and that I needed to get it over with quickly and go back. At this moment, our hero took out one of the potions and was able to burn his opponents. Despite this, I thought that it was even somehow pleasant. Having cleared them, he moved on to the next hunting ground, repeating this ad infinitum. When he returns to one hunting ground, they will appear again so that the young man can level up. Then, without taking a single break, he must throw potions at them non-stop until he finally has all 630 bottles thrown at them. This amount of experience is quite bearable. If he continues like this, he will soon have almost all the necessary skills and will be able to improve his skill level. True, our hero thought that he would make it before sunset. At that moment, he jumped onto his horse and rushed towards the royal capital. He finally thought that after reaching the royal capital, he was going to eat and drink beer in the bathroom and then go to bed. But at that moment, someone stopped him. In front of him was a knight who asked who our hero was. He was pretty sure it was a stupid but beautiful woman named Sylvia or something like that. The young man thanked for yesterday. The girl, approaching him, said that he was probably yesterday's hooligan second. Why then was the young man wandering here so late? Looking at the girl, he realized that her eyes were full of suspicion and the interrogations would now continue again. The young man said that he crawled a little in the mine. Having heard that our hero was in the mine, she asked why he was there. The young man said that he gained experience while staying in the mine caves. Looking at our hero, the girl suggested that he lie more realistically, saying that he wanted to say that he deliberately went to the most dangerous place and defeated all the monsters, saying that she did not understand this. Our hero did not understand at all what she was talking about, asking what she wanted to say. 
he just didn't think that zombie vipers could be tasty. After listening to the young man, she said that she realized that he did not have common sense or that his brain was missing a couple of convolutions. Our hero, looking at the girl, thought that she was quite annoying. The next moment he thought that this was the most dangerous place, but this girl said so and he decided to ask her. The young man reported that he had a question that he would like to ask, saying that if the girl did not object to this, and she allowed him to do this, our hero reported that there were 21 dungeons known, because the Mobian dungeons, which everyone called Paradise, were 21 in total. All the players tried to raid them, combining their data. Each of them tried to find ways to easily explore them. But at that moment the girl interrupted him, asking what he was talking about, because there were only 19 dungeons. Our hero tried to understand what this meant, because he already knew all this, asking how many of them had been explored right now. The girl said that it was obvious that there were only 13. Our hero thought that this simply could not be, asking the next moment whether he could walk and the knight said that the young man could fail. Our hero more or less understood that in this world he could die if he was killed. In other words, not many people are desperate. They even put their lives on the line to become stronger, because everything will end as soon as he dies. He already knew all the information, so he would have to risk his life a thousand, tens of one thousand times to acquire it. Our hero began to think that he could reach number one in the world sooner than he expected. In the next morning, if he collected enough, then his next destination would be here, our hero decided, wandering into the great royal library. In Mobian there are primarily two conditions for acquiring skills. First, read the skill books. There are many skill books here in the Great Royal Library. A girl met him, asking whether our hero was looking for something or not. The next moment, the young man announced that he would figure it out himself and went in search of their book, thinking that the skill book he was looking for should be somewhere here. Although he said that he was reading, if he flipped through the page, he would fulfill the conditions, so he was going to run through these shelves at a fairly fast pace. This time he was going to learn two fundamental skills the art of fencing and archery, and also four different elements for the skill called One Way. There are many types of skills here, not just fencing or archery, but also, for example, spear, hand-to-hand -hand combat or shield. There are core skills for each of these combat types. Nine types of levels, stats, classes, pawn, spear, knight, silver general, gold general, bishop, rook, promoted bishop and reinforced rook. This time our hero planned to get these four, pawn and spear, fencing and archery. He decided that he could get all this without problems. Now witchcraft was next in line. Regarding witchcraft, there are four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. Five forms of magic. The grimoires, spell books, in the Great Royal Library are the same as the last time he was in Mobian. There were only four forms of the fire element. The young man assumed that he could obtain other grimoires, either here in the library or by completing difficult quests. And while the young man was in his thoughts, he finished obtaining the fire form without any interference. He finished blue all the fundamental skill books he wanted to learn. At that moment, he carefully watched the girl who had previously offered him books, thinking that the library would show a lot of useful things. So he decided that the next plan was that he would study everything in that order, bow, sword, sorcery, and then sorcery. His plan was to gain experience through fire elemental AoE arrows while keeping his distance, and then raise the skill using ball possession, which is effective in dealing damage and is easy to use. And then there are ready-made trump cards for strong enemies, the high firepower of magic. Well, then the fourth stage, witchcraft. This is where the spiritual premium ticket comes in handy. Limited time avatar which he bought when he created second. When used, it increases the likelihood of summoning a rare spirit and there is no reason not to improve the witchcraft. However, there are limitations to using sorcery as the main weapon in battle, so it is strictly a support skill. It is better to start developing this skill only after improving archery, swordsmanship and magic to a certain extent. Our hero thought he had quickly made his plans. Allocate experience points to increase the rank of acquired skills. Then he thought that he needed a magazine for weapons. For archery you didn't need a lot of points to be able to fight. For magic, increasing to class 5 will reduce the time it takes to cast skills. And the pawn's level in sword skills is purely as a safety net in case he needs to engage in close combat. The points he could distribute ran out, and he believed that he would have to stop there, because he was satisfied with these basic skills. If he needed more later, he could obtain them from the Great Royal Library. Then he thought about what he was given to learn necessary in archery. The required skills are not only the skills of the pawn or spear, but also of all the others, knight, silver general, 
Gold General and Rook. Accordingly, he has the main skills, precise shot from the knight, powerful single blow from the silver general, swing and knockdown strike from the gold general, and powerful piercing blow from the bishop, incredibly powerful single blow from the rook. In particular, the knight, golden general and rook are the most necessary. Having studied them, the number of tactics that the young man could use would change from a single digit number. However, these skills are different from the main skills of the pawn and spear. The second condition in obtaining skills in Mobian was to complete quests. It was possible to fulfill one of the conditions, it was not necessary to take the quest. Obtaining the horse shooting skill by killing a monster while galloping. By killing 20 monsters in a row, spending one shot on each, you gain the silver general shooting skill. By killing 10 bridges in a row from 3 meters, you gain the golden general shooting skill. Getting archery elephant is a little tiring. Two conditions had to be met. Kill five monsters at the same time using the spear drill and two monsters from 25 meters using a combination of the spear and horse skills. It was reported that the young man had moved to the level of archery. Elephant, last but not least is archery. Rook, the most tiring, but also the most powerful reinforcing blow. Even our 16th cashier, he casts single strikes that provide 250% pure firepower. And in 9th grade it increases to 600%. This is an incredible single strike skill that packs a ton of firepower into simple archery. But if you think about how tiring it is to fulfill these conditions, even if a person combines other complex skills, then this will be included in the worst 10. The first step is to kill a thousand monsters using the Silver General's archery, and then deal 5000 critical hits using the Silver General's archery. These were good, they will naturally be done as you go along so they don't really matter. The real challenge is the last condition, kill three monsters in a row that attacked and absorbed at least 50% of other players' health at least 5 meters away with a single shot, using a combination of knight archery and silver archery. Our hero found it tiresome just thinking about it. If he messed up even once, he had to do it all over again, it was downright hell. If it was still inside an online game, he could ask some people to hold until their HP is depleted by 50%. It would probably have been relatively easy to complete back then. But this was the real world right now. Being in a situation where HP is depleted by 50% is ultimately life-threatening. It is useless, even if the young man tries to ask for it. When would he be able to do this situation by accident three times? This was even more useless, he really wanted rook shooting no matter what. It is an absolutely necessary skill in archery. The guy thought as he lay on his bed, but he had no choice but to accept it and do something else. At this moment, he thought that he had decided to bury the wish of fulfilling the Silver General's conditions for killing 1000 monsters, and the Silver General's conditions for 500 critical hits. I just wanted to sit and wait for an opportunity, and this opportunity came in an unexpected way. It's been a week since his reincarnation here. He used DK tactics and also raised his other skills, which was quite nice. While he was riding his horse, he thought about the fact that he needed to practice fencing. At that moment, something caught his attention. These were knights who shouted to each other that they had to retreat and they would make the way first. Our hero decided to see what was happening and saw Scarlet Mantises attacking people. People, monsters, rough breathing, clanking sounds, the smell of soil, fountains of blood, fear and screams. It was a sight that he had never seen even in Mobius Online. There are people who fell to the ground and did not move an inch. And there are five people, ready with their swords, who are taken into a circular formation. At such a speed they will be killed, our hero thought. 5. Counting to himself, he thought that he could learn shooting this way. He had to wait until the five people gained HP and were exhausted, or until they lost confidence. At that moment, our hero thought that he was able to learn shooting in a similar way, although it was wrong. People are cleaning up, they were not players, they were just like him. These were people who had lost what they risked their lives to achieve only halfway, and now they would lose it again. He couldn't just let this happen, so he grabbed his bow, thinking that seeing such despair was unbearable, and commanded everyone to lie down on the ground. The next moment, pulling the bowstring, the young man was accused of shooting at and the people, at his command, lay down on the floor. Using archery and a class 5 spear, our hero was able to deal with the mantises that were right in front of him. What surprised all the knights who stood not far from the young man. Gallantly working even in difficult situations, this figure is completely reminiscent of the number one in this world. The knight thought that her first impression of the young man was absolutely terrible. She thought that he was a young noble boy who lacked common sense and who had been brought up in a comfortable, spoiled environment, without knowing difficulties, never thinking about causing trouble for others. But in the end it turned out that everything was completely wrong. 
the young man got rid of six scarlet mantises in 20 seconds, and only with an ordinary longbow and incredible archery power. How intensive training this guy went through, the girl thought, looking at this figure that was right in front of her. What about this girl? She has strived for the path of a knight since childhood, having come this far with one blade in her hand. It was no use. No matter what she did, it was useless, she thought. After all, in her family, she was ridiculed for her lack of sword talent. And in the third order of knights that she finally joined, the people were the lowest of the low, and they were extremely weak. Her power was never shown. They just thought of her as a little girl who constantly annoyed them by screaming for justice, but she couldn't even provide justice. If she ever suspected and convicted a noble person of injustice, her superiors always began to put pressure on her. She came to completely despise these wretched dogs in power. Even now, with her comrades dead, these rotten upper echelons are desperately trying to recruit their savior Secondadono into the knightly order. This is what the order of knighthood is like, the girl wondered. But this is the image of the knight that she so longed for and strived for so much. At that moment, Secondono responded to the man's question, saying that he was planning to join the Adventurer's Guild. Having heard about the Guild of Switch Seekers, our hero asked again, thinking to himself that he was sure that they were going to thank him for his help in the fight. But in the end the man in front of him immediately said these exact words. The man who sat down in front of him apologized, thinking that he was probably too hasty. After all, he heard that Sekon Dono, despite the fact that he looks like an adventurer, is not associated with any guild. The young man thought to himself that he was definitely not related to them. But there was no reason for this. Kingdom of the Adventurer's Guild this is an organization that coordinates an agency that processes requests such as subduing monsters and carries them out. But it is actually a dirty organization to allow the kingdom to unilaterally control adventurers by revealing their personal information. The young man knew all this because it was written down in the Mobian stories. Sitting in a chair, he talked about how he politely refused. Hearing about this, the man who was sitting in front of him said that he didn't think it was a bad offer. The young man reported that he was not particularly worried about money and did not like to be associated with organizations, saying that the man should have understood him. At this moment the man scratched his head and just thought. Then our hero asked what was bothering him, and the man reported that they were an order of knighthood and they did not want to miss out on exceptional freelancers like him. And this incident in particular showed them the true power of Secondadono this time. In this situation, all privileged people began to strive to recruit him. At this moment, our hero asked if this meant that the Adventurer's Guild would protect him. The man said that if he joins, he will definitely join. This was suspicious, our hero thought, because they said that his real strength was unusual. But the only witness on the stage were the guys of the Third Order of Knighthood. Why they wanted him so badly to be associated with the Guild, our hero could not understand. He couldn't explain that he felt that it would be just a fact that would keep him from becoming number one in this world. And so our hero decided that after all he would abstain from membership in this guild. Then the man said that in this case he would entrust Sylvia to accompany him, with a person from the third order of knighthood. In his country they could, to some extent, observe him. Our hero was surprised when he heard this. The man reported that he was not sure what exactly should be used to also nobly convince him to join. Sylvia is also known in the royal capital as a knight who is strict with the nobles. He thought she would have been wise to keep an eye on him, asking what our hero thought about it. The young man thought about pursuing this old man. Sylvia's approval was quite terrible, but he did not know their true goals. After all, Sylvia treated the nobles strictly, and the upper echelon of the knightly order is attached to them. In other words, the knightly order considers Sylvia very annoying on their side. Does this mean they want to lower it? He thought that if this was true, then wasn't this too good an offer for him. This was a unique chance to get a female knight as a comrade for free. Our hero thought about how long the girl would be with him, asking this question to the knight. The man said that it was better for him to try to ask her himself. At that moment he called Sylvia, who came out from behind the door and appeared before our hero. She appeared before him in ordinary clothes, so the young man did not recognize her at first. Then the man in front of him said that he wanted the girl to take responsibility for accompanying Second Adono from now on. As for the deadline, the knightly order will try to take into account her and Second Dono's opinions. Our hero looked at the surprised girl and thought that this was not surprising, because this was an actual demotion. Moreover, although he claims to respect Sylvia's opinion, he actually suspects that one word from our hero's mouth will be enough to make a decision. Looking at the girl, he asked, saying that apparently she had no wishes. Our hero thought that it really seemed like the knightly people thought of her in a negative way. 
The girl, looking sadly at the man, said that she agreed and our hero asked how the girl got a contract for two years. During this time, our hero thought that he would have more than enough time to take first place in this world. The girl just agreed and then our hero thought that this is how the female knight Sylvia became his escort. This is a decline. The knightly order is getting rid of ballast, the girl understood. She was the second daughter of the Virginia Knights. Becoming a knight and distinguishing yourself in battle is the duty of those born into a Virginia family. However, it was hopeless for her. She had no talent with a sword. She was despised by her brother and sister, and even by her parents. Even after she finally became a knight, our hero, turning to Sylvia, asked why they couldn't make a deal. He thought that most likely the man told her to seduce him into joining an order of knighthood or something like that. Sylvia didn't understand why he was saying this. Second Dono suddenly said something similar. It's entirely possible that too many shocking things have happened. So she replied something like she would listen. The girl had no idea that the deal would greatly change her life from then on and forever. The young man was sure that his dear Sylvia wanted to work like a proud knight and he said that he wanted to help the girl. Hearing this, she thought about Second Dono, who made her heart beat a little faster, who called her directly by name, looking extremely excellent. So until this moment he had never had time to immerse himself in love, that she was always focused on her sword. But the mead she drank revealed the feelings. The young man said that if she was tired of the current situation, she should leave the third order of knighthood once and for all. And he also asked if she would date him. Hearing this phrase, the girl jumped up from her seat, asking what the young man was talking about. Our hero asked her to calm down because he said that he was making a deal. The girl realized that she really needed to calm down because it was just a deal. After all, it was not a proposal at all. At this moment, she tried to finish her glass and listen to our hero. The young man said that he believed that the girl could not yield to these evil authorities. In this case, it was necessary to create sufficient power and he has the means to make this happen. The girl said that from the age of 4 until she was 13, she always trained with the sword, but she did not commit a single act of justice. Hearing this, our hero scratched his head, apologizing, but if she let him tell him, if she lacked talent for a sword, she should have just tried something else, for example, a spear, a bow. At that time, she said that the young man was a very bad person. Grabbing him, she asked if he understood how much she had tried so far. Then she cooled down and said that the young man was right because Tona had grown up stubborn, although all the people kept saying that she had no talent for this. She continued to train with the sword, because knights are fighters for justice who wear armor, wield swords and ride horses. They also gallantly run enduring battle. She wanted to become a knight and not just a knight, but an outstanding knight, a defender of justice who would never give in to any evil, thinking that it was pathetic. At this moment, tears came to the girl's eyes. Our hero advised her to stop arbitrarily forcing herself to strive for such a knight. Everything can serve as a weapon. It is important to be a fighter for justice, who gallantly runs in during the battle. Was this true? Our hero asked the girl. She thought to herself that the young man was right. There was no need to be obsessed with his appearance. At that moment, she remembered how the young man gallantly appeared on the battlefield and said that she decided that she would be with our hero. The young man was delighted to hear this and the girl, Blushing, just looked at him, and our hero asked her to allow him to share his dream with her in this case. She listened to the young man talk about how he would be number one in the world no matter what. It really was a vague dream, amazing and funny. However, his smile when he talked about it was like the smile of a little boy. His eyes sparkled. The girl thought that in this case she wanted to try to help him. Interesting things would surely happen. She could be sure of it. And for the first time she experienced such a renewing night, as if her future had become clearer. At that moment, our hero, sitting again on his bed, began to laugh, so that even the girl who offered the rooms from below heard his laughter. The young man did not expect that everything would work exactly as he planned. Namely, asking a girl to drink too much, with a broken heart, and then winning her, was an extremely dirty tactic but he was sure that it would also benefit him. Sylvia probably has a talent for archery or magic. To think that she has been practicing fencing for 13 years and is still completely helpless at it. He thought he could only guess her growth type, either dex aligned or IMT aligned. There was a chance that the girl might be involved in manufacturing, but for now it didn't matter. In any case, finding a comrade is incredibly important, thus increasing his safety in battle. That he was able to win her over after she had severed her ties to an unsavory knightly order is also significant. Today, in just one day, he was able to deal with several problems, and when he defeated the Scarlet Mantids, he thought that now that he thought more and more about it, the Scarlet Mantids no longer seemed like significant monsters to him. 
considering his current status, it would be strange if he didn't win. If so, then this was a great opportunity. This meant that he was able to learn rook shooting, which he had been striving for. Having learned a new skill, our hero thought that tomorrow the fun days would begin. First, in order to train Sylvia, it is necessary to acquire the necessary skills for fencing. I also wanted to go into a dungeon to earn EXP, and trying to hunt for items could be fun. At this moment, our hero laughed again, and the girl who offered the numbers from below heard his laughter again, wondering if the young man was laughing again. Having heard about magical archery, the girl was surprised when our hero reported that he thought it would be just right for her. Sylvia Dex 121, IMT 103. After all, all her other numbers were in double digits, and her IMT was also unnaturally high. It looked like the girl was a magic archer. At this moment, they were sitting at a table in a tavern, discussing these points. The girl said that she had never heard of magic archers before. Our hero wondered if they really didn't exist in this world, because he was ready to swear that it was quite a popular job in Mobian. The young man asked if the girl knew at least one skill that combined archery and witchcraft. Then she reported that this was the first time for her. The young man said that it was certainly bad, but in any case something like this exists, so she had to strive for it. The girl only agreed with the young man and replied that first of all it was necessary to go to the library, where she had to study the basics and necessary skills of an archer, and then go to the forest, where he will teach her how to use a sword. Sylvia was confused by what our hero was saying, and the young man thought that it was like teaching a newbie the basics in Mobian. The next moment he informed the girl that she should just follow him. At that moment, she looked at him with big eyes, and then, shyly and embarrassedly, said that she would follow him. When they came to the forest, the girl asked how our hero knew such things. Then the young man did not understand why she was angry. She reported that it was not anger, but she was simply dumbfounded by the skills that he told her about were some of the most secret, because the nobles passed them on from generation to generation. Now everything has become clear to our hero, which is why the levels in this world are so low. As a result, the nobles like to have privileges, our hero thought. Then the girl said that if he found out about this, he would be executed. The young man asked Sylvia to keep this information to herself. Sylvia reported that if she used such advanced archery, she would be exposed in that very second, and said that the young man was not very smart. And in this case, the girl should simply not use them in public. But the next moment the girl thought that it was really possible. Subsequently, when the young man taught Sylvia, she constantly exclaimed and was surprised. He leveled up to acquire the titles of Archery Knight, Silver Archery General, Gold Archery General and Archery Elephant. Like him, she mastered them with ease. Tired of training, Sylvia reported that she had enough surprises for today. To which the young man said that it was too early to be surprised, asking how she thought he used it to improve his experience. At that moment he showed the potion that the young man had in his hands. Seeing the restoration potion, Sylvia was surprised that the guy had so many expensive potions. At that moment, he threw this potion to the girl and she, having caught him, asked if he really wanted to put it somewhere. Our hero reported that he didn't even think about it. The young man said that they were going to use these lands to carry out DK tactics. Having heard about this tactic, the girl, again surprised, asked what it was. And of course the biggest surprise at that moment echoed in this cave, our hero thought. The next moment, when they were sitting in the tavern again, the young man asked if Sylvia wanted to learn how to shell the castle. The girl, embarrassed, said that if she could learn it, she would like to. Our hero, having heard this answer, said that today they would go to the dungeon. When the girl heard about the dungeon, she was surprised again. This time they will be exploring a rank 2 dungeon called Royce. Dungeons are divided into three ranks, first, second and third, where the first is created for experts, second for experienced, and third for beginners. Then Sylvia asked why they were going to the second rank dungeon. Firstly, rewards for completing the dungeon. The boss of this dungeon is a large wolf-like monster, a fire wolf, from which a rare weapon called a fire wolf bow drops. This is an excellent longbow endowed with the element of fire, and the young man wanted to get it at all costs. Then the next goal is for Sylvia to acquire the skill of shelling a castle. We can say that this is the most important thing. The ideal monsters to complete tasks appear in this dungeon. Simply put, their goal this time is to search for rare items while meeting the requirements for acquiring skills. While they walked through this dungeon, our hero thought about all those moments. Sylvia followed him, along with her bow, trying to defend herself and defend herself. The next moment, our hero reported that he had found them. These were the monsters they came for, so the girl had to try to defeat him using the skills she had previously acquired. 
If she wasn't used to them yet, she should have practiced combining the skills of a knight with a silver general. At that moment, the girl pointed her bow directly at one of the monsters that were in front of her and hitting the monster she thought that she could just become incredibly strong, embarrassed, and looking at our hero after her attack. With DK tactics, Sylvia's stats skyrocketed and her bow knight and silver general reached first class. At this moment, our hero, looking at Sylvia, said that he had promised her this. Our hero, seeing Sylvia smiling and thanking him, thought that the girl was very beautiful, but she looked like an ordinary child. The hero thought to himself, a little embarrassed that the girl was like this. After all, Sylvia, who was immensely excited, was in perfect shape and extremely useful as a reserve. The girl thanked our hero, saying that he was amazing and amazing. The young man thanked her in response, and at that moment the girl said that she was going to become a magic archer, and the young man realized that now she was eager to fight. The next moment, when they were traveling through the dungeon, our hero walked ahead, after which he asked Sylvia to stop. About six hours had passed since they entered the dungeon. Now they come to the last aforementioned requirement for gaining the archery skill. The requirement was that the guys had to kill three monsters in a row that attacked and drained at least 50% of the other player's HP, at least a meter away with one shot, using a combination of knight's shooting and general's silver shooting. The reason they stopped here is because they found their destination, which they needed. In front of them was a flaming troll, a large monster with incredible attack power. However, its shiny, smooth skull is an obvious weak point. For a headshot, one use of the silver general skill should have been enough to kill him, the youth mused, and he saw three flaming trolls in front of him and thought that it was amazing. Turning to Sylvia, the young man told her to use the silver general's knight's combination to shoot through their skulls at least from a distance of five meters and she should shoot after he gave the signal. Sylvia said that she would obey him, asking what the young man was going to do. At this point, he went ahead and talked about how he was delaying the inevitable and telling Sylvia not to lose her cool no matter what. Our hero's HP was full. In terms of numbers, it should be enough to withstand critical hits from flaming trolls. Everything was fine, everything was fine, but the next moment, our hero, looking at the troll, thought that everything was bad after all. After all, he really was scared. The next moment the troll swung at our hero. The young man understood that this skill was absolutely necessary to help with people and believed that he could handle it. At that moment, the troll hit our hero on the head, and the young man fell. When she saw this, the girl could not believe her eyes. Our hero, trying to get up and clearing his throat, thought that it was strange, but his HP was taken off a quarter and could he stand it, our hero thought. He wondered if his teeth would be restored, if it were a Mobian. Even a severed arm would easily return to its place, if he drank a few quality potions, but he had no guarantee that this world was the same, thinking that maybe it was a bad idea. But getting up, the young man thought that this was not all, Sylvia was still waiting for him. At that moment the troll appeared again in front of the young man, and he clenched his jaws and realized that he had to endure. He had to stand his ground, because he was number one, number one, he would never lose face. He thought that he would become number one in this world again. Even if he was just an NPS, he asked himself about the hero. He thought that he was number one in the world. The throne was his, this was his life and his meaning of existence. He would not give it to anyone, repeating that he was number one in this world. At that moment, the troll hit our hero on the head, and flying to the side, our hero tried to see what level of HP he had now. Realizing that the HP level was due he asked Sylvia to shoot. Hearing this, Sylvia shot the troll right in the head. One troll was defeated. The young man thought that now two more had to be defeated. At this moment, the girl, attacking the trolls, said that the young man was a fool. Lying on the ground, our hero listened to how when it was all over, Sylvia scolded him, the girl cried, but everything was okay. Our hero was able to survive and the next moment they moved on. They learned a new skill called Castle Bombardment. Sylvia felt that she had acquired this skill and was surprised. What an incredible feeling of satisfaction our hero had because he felt with all his heart that he was glad that he had endured this. His alternate life in this alternate universe was shaken up when he gained a companion named Sylvia. Chapter After what happened, they restored their strength and went to the Royce dungeon. The last thing they managed to do was kill the boss. Standing in front of the flaming wolf's lair, our hero reported that the boss of this dungeon was a strong monster with a huge wolf body, clothed in flames. Due to the fire barrier, he has a huge resistance to damage. For everyone in Mobian, this boss would have been a very big problem, but for them it should not have been such a big problem and it was decided that they would not release his stunlock. 
Hearing about the stun lock, our hero again saw that Sylvia was surprised. At one point, our hero decided to include the flaming wolf in the category of the easiest opponents, and the main reason for this was the stun lock. Asking the girl if she was listening, he said that, firstly, he attacks him using the bishop skill. The flaming wolf gets angry at him and then he uses the golden general. After this, the girl attacks him using the bishop and then pushes the flaming wolf away with the help of the golden general. Then the hero announced that he would shoot the bishop and repeat this until the boss was killed. This was the ideal tactic to destroy the flaming wolf, and its name was Almighty Camp of the Golden Bishop. This was a popular holding technique that could be used by two or more people. Sylvia, having listened to everything, asked if it would work as well as the simplest method. Our hero said that it did not matter whether he would work this way or not, the main thing was that this was the safest way and therefore they could proceed with it. Thus the wolf was still killed. Three weeks later, Sylvia learned the shooting skill without any problems. The only thing left to do was to knock out the flaming wolf bow. But they came to the Royce dungeon every day and killed hundreds of singing wolves. Finally it appeared. Sylvia, seeing the bow that had changed and thought that this really was the flaming wolf bow, now second Dono will become even stronger, the girl said. The young man asked what Sylvia was talking about, because this bow was hers. Hearing this, the girl was surprised, and the young man, taking the bow in his hands, said that she was going to become an archer using magic. Therefore, it was not surprising that it would be she who would wield this bow. Holding out the weapon to the girl, our hero reported. Taking the bow, she asked if it was too much to give her such a beautiful bow. The young man reported that everything was fine. He was going to study magic, so he did not need to use weapons of this type and suggested that the girl use it wisely, turning to Sylvia, asking. The young man was sure, she thanked him. The next moment Sylvia asked what he just said. Our hero said that he considered Sylvia a talkative fool. Hearing this, she asked if it was the hero who spoke. Putting aside jokes, the young man reported about studying magic. The girl said that this was the first time she had heard about this. The young man apologized for not telling her. Then Sylvia reported that shooting and wielding a sword, and now magic, she believed. Becoming number one in the world was no longer a childhood dream that the young man had. But our hero reported that he still had a long way to go. In any case, he had to tell her about his plans. When she heard about connections with the Royal Academy of Magic, the girl was surprised. At that moment they were galloping through the forest and our hero reported that she was the second daughter of the knightly order of the Virginia family. Did she have any relationship with them or something like that? Second asked. Learning magical skills involves reading grimoires. The grimoire for obtaining the simplest form can be found in the library, but to obtain the forms of Raptor and Curl, he needed to gain knowledge at the Magic Academy. No matter what the cost, he must infiltrate this academy. Why exactly infiltrate? Our hero wondered to himself, because it was the fastest method. The Royal Academy of Magic has restrictions for those who are not a teacher or student of the academy. Because of this, they would have to resort to routine formalities to get there. He could not even imagine how long it would take before he was accepted. The young man thought that that was why he wanted to find at least some connections to ask them. Speaking of whether they would be allowed to explore this academy. But at this moment, Sylvia sadly said that it was impossible, because her father abandoned her due to her lack of sword talent. Asking if our hero knew about this, because she couldn't even imagine that he would help such a useless daughter. At this moment, our hero asked why, in this case, the girl should not show him her merits. The girl explained that he would still be very strict, even if she did. This is her father, an outstanding warrior. In battle he relies only on his sword. That's why he became a knight and most likely he will say that she threw the sword and ran to the bow. Our hero thought that the concern for the family was that she could not get along with her father and believed that direct attacks would not work here. Now he had no choice. In this case he could only deceive Sylvia's father, so our hero said that he had an idea. The girl, seeing his grin, said that she had a bad feeling about this. But our hero thought that he called this a strategy of diversion, and they had to start executing the plan tomorrow. Sylvia was shocked when she heard this, saying that her heart was not ready yet. The next day they bowed to him, greeting the young man, saying that they were greeting his excellency. Our hero, looking at this, could not understand how it came to this. After all, he gave this plan the name distraction, but the whole tactic was that he would dress in expensive clothes, pretend to be an aristocrat from a neighboring country, and force Sylvia's father to write them a letter of recommendation to the Academy of Magic. It looked like he had really deceived Sylvia's father, Noir San. He didn't know how, but he really believed that the young man was a foreign nobility. The degree of misunderstanding has long since exceeded the critical mark. In the end, he was ready to tell Noirson's whole truth, but for many reasons he thought more that he would not bear it. 
The next moment, when the man bowed his head in front of him, the young man asked him to get up, thinking that there was no turning back, because now that everything had gone as it had, he would try to play a noble person as best he could. At this moment, Sylvia was waiting for our hero from the side. The young man explained that due to certain circumstances he asked him to keep his presence in this house a secret. Sylvia's father said that he would do this, because not a single surviving soul would know that the young man was here. Our hero was thinking at that moment that he had little faith that the plan would work, but it seemed that everything was going according to plan. The young man reported that he had two requests, I think to myself that no matter how pro he was, he could not lose concentration. At this moment, our hero reported that he needed to start with the simplest thing. He would like to contact the Royal Academy of Magic, asking if the man in front of him could do anything about it. Sylvia's father reported that he could naturally help him if the young man was going to transfer here as a first-year student. He could write him a letter of recommendation right now. Our hero thought that the translation was bad, because it would take forever and it would not take him much time to find the necessary grimoires. The young man reported that he would prefer something shorter, asking Sylvia's father if he had other options. At this moment, the man said that in this case he could become an exchange student, and our hero thought that this was a great idea. He wondered how long the transfer would take, because he would prefer the exchange to be as short as possible. But if it was two days and he didn't find the grimoires, it would be very bad. Apparently, for his purpose, he needed a longer period. The young man said that it would take two weeks, asking him to write him a letter of recommendation, indicating these details. Sylvia's father reported that everything would be as our hero wished and the young man said that now that they had sorted out this issue, it was time to move on to his second request. Let's get straight to the point. The young man believed that he was a lord and simply showed sympathy for Sylvia, saying that the girl had a talent for shooting and magic. He asked to let her go with him. Our hero thought that the lord was the first thing that came to his mind. How it sounded, the man looked at him in surprise, thinking that it was not good. Maybe it was a bad idea after everything he'd done? Our hero thought. At this moment, Noir San asked to raise our hero's head. The girl was disciplined, but if his lordship turned a blind eye to it, he could use her as he wished. Asking if our hero was sure about Sylvia, the father said that the girl was not talented with a sword, but her shooting skills would make her world famous, our hero reported. He insisted that Sylvia should leave the Chivarlic Order to accompany him. With such talent, Sylvia invited her to move from the Chivarlic Order to him and sign a two-year contract. The young man reported that when it ended, he planned to conclude an agreement with her. At that time he would need his help and the father said that with all due respect, he meant that whether the young man was sure that he wanted this. The man reported that he only wanted a bright future for Sylvia. Even if he sat here on the island, he would patiently wait for the return of our hero. At this moment, Sylvia succumbed to emotions and almost cried. Our hero thought that he did not quite understand what Sylvia's father said, but he could believe that it was probably true. The young man reported that the man's fortitude was remarkable. His majesty would never forget Virginia's family. At that moment, they left Virginia's estate, and Sylvia reported that the young man was a fool. No matter how many lives they had, she would never compare to him, turning to second Sama. The young man, walking ahead of her, thought that he was thinking too much in general. Because now, even though they had gained access to the Royal Academy of Magic, he had a bad feeling about it. He was even a little scared, thinking that no one should have deceived people. A week passed using DK tactics and since then Sylvia, and he sold the skins of flaming wolves, gained experience and enjoyed the magical lifestyle. They farmed experience on slugs. If you go deeper into the slug forest, on the way from the royal capital, you will find rare slugs with randomly dropped items. Their rarest upgrade, obtained from the holy slug, was the magic restoration wand. This is an ultra-rare item with a 0.05% chance. Anyone who equips it will be able to easily cast healing spells from the school of restoration. This item was very useful. In particular, when novice wizards change their type to a healer, this was very useful for them. Because the heller uses it, he gets double the effect. While it lasts, the skills used with the wand will be two and a half times more powerful than usual. When he is used by a restorative wizard with this boost, he could easily heal at least half of his comrades' HP. Now the knocked out teeth are in place, and they have been restored, so if you think about the fact that the high quality potion that came out in the winter was 80,000 CL, then you can understand how powerful the effect was. At this moment, our heroes were on their way to the magic academy. Sylvia and he did not have enough level to be healers, so they couldn't achieve double the effect. But nevertheless, the ability to use recovery will be very useful to them. Thanks to the holy slug, this is an excellent gift from him, sure that after these words, 
He was very pleased with himself, and now our heroes find themselves near the Royal Academy. He and Sylvia, after obtaining the necessary items and experience, waited a little time and finally arrived here. Two people greeted them at the Academy. These were professors and our hero thanked them for rescheduling their plans and meeting with them. One of the professors asked if the young man would mind being called Second Kun. Our hero said whatever he wanted. He was second, and this was Sylvia, they were counting on them in these two weeks. The girl said that she was the director of Paula Memento. She hoped that the guys got there successfully. And this man next to her, the homeroom teacher of the first a class, who was joined by Second Kun. His name was Kevin. He was pleased to meet you, the man said. Our hero said that it would sound rude, but Sylvia was also in the class with him. The young man asked and the teachers answered that it was so. During his exchange, they will live in a house rather than in a dormitory so that their rooms will not be separated. Therefore, they saw off our heroes saying that they had prepared uniforms for them. Our hero thought that everything was going well and, it seemed, everything was going according to plans. It didn't seem like anyone suspected them. They needed to concentrate in these two weeks as they walked along the corridor behind their new teachers, our hero thought, looking around. He was informed that today the man would teach lessons in the morning. Later they would have a tour of the school, asking how our hero came up with this idea. Having heard about the excursion, the young man became very interested, asking if this teacher would give him an excursion. The teacher explained that it would not be him, it would be a student. He would ask someone from class A, because everything had already been decided. He reported that the evenings were a time for self-study, but the best students have a lot of free time. So our hero could spend this time on an excursion, and the young man thought that he seemed to be grateful for this. This evening he was going to gather information on their purpose, despite this wisdom to ask about the grimoires, although he thought that it could wait. The next moment, interrupting his thoughts, he was informed that they had finally arrived and this was the class in which our hero was to be. Looking at the class, everyone looked carefully at the teacher and the teacher, wishing everyone a good day, announced that. As he said earlier, two exchange students were joining class for two weeks, from today, now asked to be allowed to introduce them speaking about that. That it was second Kun and Sylvia San who could be entering the audience. Our heroes introduced themselves to the guys and the young man. Introducing himself, said that his name was Second, he came from the island country of Zapanga to check out this place, hoping that they would all get along. All the girls, seeing our hero, reported that the young man was very handsome, whispering among themselves, thinking that he was very stunning. Sylvia said that she was Sylvia Virginia, she also hoped to get along with everyone, the girl said a little embarrassed. At this moment, everyone looked carefully at our heroes, and the teacher said that now they could sit down in the empty seats. After Sylvia introduced herself, the guys thought that the girl was cute and also looked at her point blank. The teacher said that since today was a special occasion, they would review the basics again. The young man thought about whether he could learn at least a little magic in these two weeks, because now he was even worried that when this lesson was over, he would quickly ask to show him the surroundings. After the lesson ended, our hero approached the professor, saying that it was probably a little unexpected, but he would like to be provided with a person who would give the excursion that evening. He would like to make friends with him. The teacher said that everything was in order and called a young man named Maine Coon, who was sitting in the very back desks. Approaching our hero, the young man asked if he had called him, turning to the professor, and the professor said that, probably, the student was already ready for the evening. Everything went a little wrong, saying that the young man could not show the cafeteria to new students. And our hero, looking at the young man, saw how the guy said that he was happy about it, apologizing, saying that he could ask the guy a question about magic. The young man turned to our hero, thinking that he first wanted to ask Main before searching himself. This would allow him not to take unnecessary risks. The teacher said that our hero could ask about everything because the young man was a representative of the first years. At this moment, our hero realized that this was a stupid question that he had asked earlier. Hearing that it was a representative of the first years, the young man thought about how he could get even more information. He told Main that he hoped they would get along during the excursion. The young man smiled at our hero, reciprocating his feelings. Looking at the guy's smile, our hero realized that the young man was not afraid of him and he could ask him about everything, including grimoires. But before that, he asked for Sylvia, saying that they were heading to the cafeteria. At that moment, she was standing nearby with the girls, discussing various things. The next moment, turning to the young man, she apologized for keeping him waiting. At that moment she saw Maine, his majesty, hearing that the girl addressed him as his majesty, 
Our hero was very surprised. The young man reported that in this school origin did not matter and she should consider him her equal if possible. Stuttering, Sylvia asked for forgiveness. Our hero realized that this guy was a prince. This is the first time he has met from the royal family. This is different from what he expected. He thought that the young man would say something like on his knees. In addition, he ended with the phrase consider me your equal, and the young man believed that he should do as he said. At that moment, Maine took our hero by the hand, talking about that, that they were supposed to go to the cafeteria together. At that moment, he looked carefully at the guy, thinking that the young man was very cold with a beautiful girl, and was being nice to him, with such a nice guy like him. It seemed to him that something was wrong here. Was this guy really of a different orientation? Our hero wondered, looking at the young man. The young man thought that this was stressing him out, because he had to answer Maine and had the same face, if you think about it. It was the day on which the prince noticed him, trying to understand how our hero could reject him. Our hero thought that he believed that the only chance was to ask him right now. Turning to Maine, our hero asked if the young man had lost his way. Confused, Maine Coon asked him what happened and said that it was not so, asking why our hero asked about it. Sylvia was surprised when she heard their dialogue. Then our hero reported that, unlike Sylvia, the young man with her was a little different or like this. Maine asked what our hero was talking about and reported that Second Sama was wrong and that he was straight. At that moment, someone collided with our hero. Second did not notice this and thought that he had really collided with someone or it seemed to him. A boy with ears running past, looking at our hero, thought that the young man was very cute. The young man informed Second Sen that he was interested in him. Our hero at that moment looked at the prince who stood in front of him, asking what kind of disrespect it was, because the young man was talking to the top first player in plans in the whole world. The prince said that this was exactly the case, it was the first time he had spoken with such an honest person. At this moment, Sylvia, who was standing next to our hero, was very surprised because of the prince at how the young man could talk to him. The young man said that he was so excited to hear that various statuses in society became nothing when the young man entered the royal academy. In the end, everyone saw in him only the second prince, the guy said, and he was nothing more than the second prince, no matter where he was, at the royal residence or at the academy. The young man said that only his mother saw in him who he really was. Second said that this was a fairly typical situation. At this moment, Sylvia, seeing the young man talking like that again, said that it was very impolite. The prince reported that the young man was right, and the girl was talking to a man who, immediately after realizing that Himein was a prince, asked him directly if he was on the right path. Sylvia thought it was a lack of politeness or something else, but it didn't mean anything else. At this moment the guy asked, speaking about Maine, he didn't know where the grimoires were kept. Having heard this, the young man said that if the guy asked about those that are within the walls of the academy, then the form of Opo Opo and Raptor he could find in the library. Also, Carl's uniform is there, but the young man will need permission from the library to take it. As for the fourth form, the young man said, at that moment second interrupted him, asking what he wanted to say, that they also have a fourth form. The young man said that he believed that the fourth form was kept in the royal palace. I've only seen her once before. Speaking of which, he thought it was time to go to the temple, addressing our heroes. Since they were so damn polite, the young man asked Maine to give him an evening tour of the academy. By the time they approached the main dish, the library, the sun had already set below the horizon. The next moment, Maine, conducting the library of our heroes, reported that they had finally arrived at the library, which was already closed. Any student at the Royal Academy of Magic can use it, and therefore the guys could visit it tomorrow at any time. Today was a lot of fun, the young man said and said goodbye to our heroes, and left alone, second thought that his shoulders were terribly stiff and complained about it and Sylvia reported that he stole her phrase. At that moment, our hero thought that he would start preparing tomorrow and spend the whole day in the library. After all, Sylvia was supposed to study fire magic. To become an archer mage you need to improve in magic. Ultimately, he would like the girl to learn the fire raptor form and the fire carl form to use in combination with the flaming wolf bow which was imbued with fire. At that moment, our hero heard conversations about the two of them. The people who walked along the corridor, or rather two students. We were talking among ourselves about the new exchange students and they decided that our heroes looked very scared. Both the girl, and the guy who was with her. One of the guys who walked along the corridor reported that he saw them together with his highness mane and probably what was happening between them. Then another guy asked if the young man meant a bookworm with a complex. At that moment the guy told his friend not to talk. So to which he replied, it was all okay because no one heard, saying that, probably, the young man thought so too. 
but they had no idea that our heroes were listening to them from around the corner at that moment. The guy was talking about how this main was definitely pissing him off with his condescending look. He constantly hears sarcasm when the young man talks about his situation. That's why the young man was always alone. They both laughed at Maine, thinking that the guy was completely alone. Our hero, listening to all this, thought that these rumors were seriously spreading in a negative way. But as for Maine, was the young man really so lonely? This means he was probably subjected to bad treatment. He believed he had no choice except how to become his friend. He might even make connections with the Castal royal family and asks to show him the form for Grimoire, thinking that he probably has no choice. The young man also heard that Maine was spending a lot of money to improve his grades. Even if he is a prince, he cannot act so confidently. Despite this, they tried their best. The young man became more and more disgusting, and in public he pretended to be a damn honest student. Becoming bud is with these transfer students, but the trash has to stick together. The guys also said that if they get there, they too will become complete losers. At this moment, they didn't expect Sylvia to appear in front of them. Sylvia, finding herself in front of the young men, asked what kind of discrimination was heard in their conversation. Seeing the exchange student, the guys were very surprised, and the girl asked what they were talking about now, or rather who they were talking about. The guys began to make excuses that she had understood everything wrong. They were talking about a girl from Class F. After all, the girl was incompetent, so it happened that the girl was a beast man. They didn't discriminate against her in any way. At this moment, a fire flashed in Sylvia's eyes, asking if the guys were telling the truth. After all, they could probably tell why they called her in second trash. At that moment the guys realized that they were in trouble. After all, she should have understood if they allowed her to explain, but it was already too late. Having received what they deserved from the girl, the boys ran away. She thought that justice had been restored. Having heard about the beast man, the young man thought that he was probably supposed to remember the girl. At that moment, he looked at Sylvia, who was incredibly proud of herself for being able to bring order to two guys who were chatting behind the other's backs. The next day, our hero reported that he would like to read the grimoire of the raptor form, All the Elements. The girl who was an employee at the library reported that there was no problem for this and asked to wait for our hero. The next moment, after reading the grimoire, the young man studied the raptor form, Fire. Seeing how quickly our hero studied books, Sylvia was surprised. Was the young man finished? It was just another day for him. While Sylvia looked at him from the side in surprise, he simply leafed through the remaining three grimoires and handed them to the girl. After all, for the young man it was all very easy. Sylvia was surprised if she could learn all this in two weeks. She told Second Dono that he didn't have any tricks that he could share. Tricks, secrets, key points, these are the things he hated. In his previous life, when he was number one in the world, those annoying players who were new to the game would always ask stupid questions. Like he would tell them a few tricks to get stronger or he had a secret about how become stronger, increase his skills and everything like that. This made me very depressed. Things like when they wanted to ask him, because he was number one. After all, why bother? He had bad memories of these obvious selfish motives, but wondered what happened next. Eventually the word trick had tired him out here in this new world, and now, surprisingly, it didn't sound even a little unpleasant. After all, at that moment Sylvia was asking about some trick. Our hero has already thought that Sylvia probably thinks that if she doesn't learn these skills in two weeks, she will become a burden for him. So she swallowed her honor and asked him for help. It was really nice to see such a decision 6 because it was different from ordinary relationships on the internet. After all, everything was much more complicated here. Our hero thought that this world was different from his previous one. He was sincerely glad that Sylvia was counting on him. Second reported that he planned for them to study separately, but plans changed, so he decided that he could help the girl. At that moment, the hero thought that this was the first time in his life when he felt wise, so he decided to teach her. The next thing he said to Sylvia, who looked upset but still happy. The next moment, when our hero spent a lot of time in the library, the young man, closing the book in front of Sylvia, said that today they could stop there. Unfortunately, the young man took on a serious look when he explained the meaning of the grimoires, since they were too abstruse and difficult to understand. It will be 10,000 times better if they learn them practically than reading these boring books. For Sylvia, to this type of element, he thought that they belonged to how they were supposed to use them. The power of fire, and how to calculate it, changes in cast time and cooldown at each rank. The young man tried to explain as much useful information as possible. The girl could find such information on Wiki. In the middle of their conversation, Sylvia asked if she should have remembered all this, and our hero replied that it was natural. 
These things were the only ones he had learned in his life, but this was the information about Mobian, and he knew more than anyone. This knowledge, which will not help real life in any way now, is the most formidable weapon. The young man thought that he was very happy about this, asking if the girl had learned it. She said that she wanted to watch them a little more and the young man, hearing that Sylvia needed more time, advised her not to rush. The next moment they decided to go back. Our hero walked along the corridor. He was seen by a man with ears. It was a beast man who once encountered our young man. The girl said that the guy was very handsome. Hearing this, our hero asked if the girl told him this, pointing her finger at him and reporting that it was exactly like that. Saying that she was Eco Leaflet, asking who the young man was. Eco Leaflet was the one the guys were talking about a few days ago when our heroes overheard them. Second reported that his name was Second. Hearing this, at that moment Sylvia called our hero and the beast, the girl, seeing Sylvia, turned to her and asked what her name was. Sylvia introduced herself and shook hands with the beastman who reported that she was very glad to meet you. Our hero thought to himself that it was a very friendly little animal, but then he realized that it was wrong to think so and corrected himself that it was a harmless girl who was being mistreated, thinking that it was simply outrageous and unforgivable. Turning to Eko, he asked if the girl had any problems. Then looking at him, she asked what he was talking about, and the young man thought that perhaps he should have come from afar. Turning to Eko, he said that if she really did not have any problems, then if something happened to her, she could tell him and he would somehow help her. Hearing this, the girl thanked him. At that moment, there was a cart with books behind her. Our hero, seeing them, asked why she carries these books all the time. The girl reported that she was being asked to wear them, and our hero thought that it was clear to him that this girl was an errand girl, asking if she carried them all alone. The girl proudly reported that everything was fine, because she was very strong. Our hero asked that if something happened, she should tell him and he would help. Then she asked if the young man was sure. Our hero reported that he would personally support her in any incident, so she could be honest. Eko said that she could handle it herself, thanks to our hero. To which the young man did not understand why she was so stubborn and the girl said that it was one of those things that she was good at, so she would do her best to help everyone. After all, she believed that the more she helped them, the better they would treat her. Hearing this, our hero was shocked, thinking that she should have stopped this. At this moment, the girl, smiling happily at our hero, announced that they would see each other, dragging forward a huge cart with books. Seeing this honest look, the force mechanism that never connects in no matter how long, they will spin. He remembered these shackles of pain. It was meaningless. Our hero was remembering his past life and even if he plays online games, it will not affect anything. Even if he tries harder than anyone else, he will become number one in the world. One day it will only be an achievement in an online game, thinking that wasting your life on something like that was pointless. I think that it would be pointless, our hero repeated this again, because he was surprised at how senseless and vain his efforts were then. What a fool and hopeless man he was, as soon as he realized this, he already died in shame. After this, he woke up in a new world, which was an absolute miracle for him. You can say that he was sent to him by the gods, such a hopeless guy like him was miraculously saved by some accident. However, whether the same miracle would happen to this girl, unfortunately, he did not know this answer. Remembering Eko's silhouette, he thought about what he couldn't leave as it was. He wanted to save her from the clutches of helplessness. At that moment they were standing in the middle of the corridor and Sylvia, seeing our hero deep in thought asked what the young man was thinking about. Our hero realized that he was standing lost in thought in the middle of the corridor and had to move on. Arriving home, he continued to think about the girl, reasoning that she really was that weak. Given that she is a beastman, how could she enter the prestigious Royal Academy of Magic? Our hero thought. After all, he was completely bewildered by this situation. This is an elite academy that is famous in the kingdom. If someone entered there, then he was definitely successful in learning magic, should be able to use simple types of magic. Our hero, thinking about this, tried to understand what he needed to do now. After all, after thinking about all the options at night, he came to only one conclusion, thinking that he and Sylvia had to recruit Eco Leaflet. Sylvia said that there was nothing more beautiful than sharing her path with the path of our hero. She was too lucky and our hero said that there was no need for these nightly jokes early in the morning. He is still not sure that Eko will agree. If she does not agree, he will show her his strength, after which he will give her some advice on developing her skills and choosing a path in life. At this moment, while our heroes were walking across the campus, Sylvia opened her eyes and was incredibly surprised by what she saw. Eko was sitting in front of our heroes, covered in dirt, and approaching her, they asked what happened to the girl. 
The young man had a bad feeling about this, thinking that something was probably broken in Eco. After all, none of the students passing by stopped to help her. The guys just walked by, looking as if nothing had happened. He just couldn't understand it. The next moment, approaching Eco, he asked if she was normal or if she just fell, stretching out his hand to the girl. But she said that she was fine and that he should not talk to her. Our hero, seeing this reaction, understood that this was it, the worst of all evils, and what he had felt before. It was the desperation he saw in Eko at that moment. The girl told our hero not to approach her and ran away. Second followed the girl, thought that he did not know what happened to her, but knew what it was like. Having already realized this fact, her efforts were useless. But what happened was that Eko carried dirt bags for the boys. They grinned, saying that she put aside her business to bring them dirt, which they would now throw at her, thinking that Eko was probably very stupid. The next moment, one of the bags she brought flew straight at the girl, and the guys started laughing at her. What Eko did not expect at all, because she helped these people from the bottom of her heart. The girl was forced, without leaving a single drop of hope to face the reality to which she had until now turned a blind eye, in which nothing would change, even if she continued to lie to herself about these pointless attempts, thinking that she couldn't continue because it was too sad to watch. Everyone had to have a dream, whether Eko agreed with it, and our hero reported that they could save her. However, she continued to run away from our heroes, but the young man and Sylvia pursued her. The next moment, having cornered Eko, who was looking at them with frightened eyes, our heroes also looked at her. The girl screamed for the guys not to come near her. An hour had finally passed since they were able to drive her into this corner. Sylvia is finally exhausted, but Eko apparently still has SB. There is a chance that everything was fine, and that she was not afraid to go out, they just wanted to talk. The girl said that she did not talk and asked to leave her alone, saying that the guys should leave. The next moment she started crying. Our hero looked at the girl and thought that leaving her alone now would definitely make the situation even more hopeless. She will be the loser. Eko is slow and strong, has a lot of SB and has a chance to have low INT. This is a risky business, our hero thought, but it was worth it. At this moment, the young man took out his sword, telling Sylvia not to interfere, and Eko screamed for the young man not to come. But at that moment Sylvia saw our hero raising his sword over Eko's head. Then the young man simply cut off his hand, which neither Sylvia nor Eko expected. Seeing what the young man did, Sylvia rushed to him, saying that the guy was very stupid. But the young man ordered her to stay together. At this moment, pulling out his wand, he thought that if he could convince her to side with him now, he was sure that he would get closer to becoming number one in this world and therefore, he gave Eko the magic wand giving the girl a magic wand, saying that restorative magic was suitable for her, and asking her to use it and heal his hand. Our hero realized that the girl was most likely a paladin. Seeing what our hero was asking of her, the girl reported that she simply could not do it, shaking her head from side to side. This is a restoration wand or wand, an incredibly rare wand made by Holy Ooze that allows anyone to use restoration magic, also called restoration medicine, as long as it is equipped. If the eco type is paladin, then the plus bonuses that healers are limited to are activated. It must be channeled into a high enough level of restorative energy to instantly bring his arm back. At that moment, our hero began to say that he was in great pain and asked the girl to hurry up and do it. But she sobbed and said that she could not. The young man said that she could not say this because he had to tell him that she could do it, telling her that the girl should do it quickly, giving her the magic wand. Taking the rod, the girl agreed, and our hero told her to do it, because she had to believe that she could help. He mentally admitted to himself so that she would realize her path. At that moment the girl directed magic at our hero, using treatment. Our hero's hand was restored, everything returned to normal. And Eko, having fallen from powerlessness and in surprise, only looked at the young man. The next moment, our hero fell to the ground exhausted, saying that he couldn't and apologizing to everyone. At that moment, Sylvia rushed to second dam. The young man lost too much blood, so he fell to the ground. In this world, it seems that even if a young man recovers his HP or damage from damage, his physical condition does not immediately return to normal. But he was only thinking about Paladin, because he guessed the class when he was chasing her. The girl was slow, strong, enriched with SB, and is a failure at the Magic Academy. This means that she has an insanely low INT. She simply cannot be imagined as a mage. These factors in her life fit perfectly into the traits of a paladin. Since her INT is low, no magic happened to her. Her dex is also low, so archery wasn't an option for her. Her STR is stable, but her AGI is low, so she won't be able to maneuver. Even though her INT is low, she has a huge amount of MP. 
Just looking at these factors, it seems like she was completely hopeless. However, some high-level players quite choose this type. This is the reason why, whenever a team became prominent, there was always a paladin among them. So why are they tanks? Our hero wondered to himself. Paladins channel their high HP, SP, VIT to summon a shield, becoming a wall for their teammates and absorbing damage from monsters with one hand. And, as soon as they begin to suffer from damage, they themselves use restoration magic to regain their HP. In other words, they can maintain a wall position until they use up all their mana. If only they had turned a paladin like Eco into their fighter. Paladin Eco, well-rounded second, and magical archer Sylvia. He was able to create a full-fledged team, having a strong middle player, and a defensive back. The young man was very close to becoming number one in this world and being able to aim even higher. Our hero was thinking that he wanted to get his eco team no matter how, and so this is what came to his mind. At this moment, Sylvia desperately called the young man, and Eko only looked at our hero with tears in her eyes. The young man tried to use her, tried to make him his ally since he became confident in the benefits of her possible knowledge and healing. Now that I think about it, he did something similar with Sylvia. He took advantage of the emptiness in her heart, somehow convincing the girl to be on his team. Our hero thought that he had overdone it, trying to attract her attention, and somehow managed to not only attract her to his side, but also persuaded her to join the group. But he wanted her to follow him, our hero wanted this so desperately, thinking about it to himself. The next moment, opening his eyes, our hero came to his senses and was greeted by Sylvia. Running up to our hero's bed, she told the young man not to overexert himself, because if he had lost his arm, he would not have been able to become number one in this world. At that moment, turning to Sylvia, the young man said that it was hard to tell her, but then there was a left hand, not this one, which the girl was holding. At this point in blushing, Sylvia let her go, saying that the young man had a nightmare. The young man told her not to worry about him, and the girl said that these should have been her words, because she, too, was allegedly saved by our hero. They were saved by no one else, it was him who turned to second. Sylvia reported that she was absolutely hopeless and second easily saved her from herself. Therefore, he does not need to worry about anything, because she will be his knight and will follow him to the ends of the earth. Smiling, the girl left the room where our hero lay. At that moment, sitting up on the bed, the young man thought that the girl had really heard him talking in his sleep. But he was sure that this was not the case, it was quite possible that Sylvia had seen through him from the very beginning. Even his attempts to take advantage of her, use her even the unpleasant feelings that he sometimes had in the like. He could not even think that the girl would dare to take upon herself the responsibility of saying that she would follow him. Thinking about how good she was, at this moment, his thoughts were interrupted by a scream, and Eko burst into the room, calling our hero. The young man was very surprised when he saw her. Then, with tears in her eyes, the girl rushed to him, apologizing to him. Patting her on the head, our hero reported that healing magic suited her very well and asked her to leave school and join him. I found an excellent opportunity to ask him properly to benefit from her, assuring that this would be her salvation. At this moment, the girl asked if she could really help our hero, glad that he asked her about it. The young man said that it was really to the point, it was even possible to travel together. The next moment she became embarrassed and was unable to talk further. Our hero asked if there really was a thing that did not allow her to leave school, and the girl, hearing this question, asked how the young man knew, to which he reported that he was number one in the world, and therefore she could tell him from the very beginning what kind of thing it was. Sitting down on his bed, the girl began to tell. From everything he heard, the young man realized that the girl was born in a village of beastmen far from the capital. From birth, Eko had a high amount of mana, from childhood, which her father boasted about with or without reason, because of which the villagers had hope. Does this mean that Eko has a talent for witchcraft? Time passed until one day the entire village collected as much gold as possible so that the girl could enter the prestigious Royal Academy of Magic a talent from a remote beastman village. They mistakenly believed that by becoming an outstanding sorceress, Eko would be able to help develop the village. So, how did she pass the entrance exams? Because due to her physical orientation, she only had an absurdly small INT, while self-study and knowledge of theory did not cause problems. She also mastered the predator form for the wind and earth elements. However, due to her pitifully low INT, she didn't have half the ability of the other students, and she became a failure. That is why the girl could not give up everything. She has no right to let down the villagers, Eko said, looking at our hero. The young man, looking at the girl, thought about what the residents had created with their expectations, a huge, unbearable burden that was dragging her to the bottom. 
The girl lived with this burden on her heart, even now this burden was destroying her. The young man said that everything was fine, because he had already prepared her rescue route, saying that she could escape. Luckily for her, she has a great opportunity here. He thought that everything was different now, not like it was with him. Iko was surprised when she heard about the great opportunity. Our hero reported that she could not take it into her head. The next moment, our hero asked if the girl had heard that he was going to become number one in this world, asking if she understood what it was. Having heard about number one in the world, the girl looked at the hero in surprise. The young man said that this means that he will be the best in the whole world, because there is no one stronger than him and she will become one of his comrades. While asking, our hero looked at Iko, saying that there really was something more prestigious. After all, the Royal Academy of Magic is nothing more than trash, being a magician in the kingdom is quite banal. He was sure that the residents would also be happy about this, although no, the guy thought, talking about how six they would rejoice, immediately after three days and nights of the holiday. Our hero reported that the villagers would erect a huge bronze statue of her in the center of the village, composing legends about the girl until the end of time. Legendary words, when she returns to the village, she will be so significant that at the mere sight of her, everyone will scream and fall prostrate before her. Hearing this, the girl began to laugh. Our hero talked about how she would return as a celebrity, and everyone would tell her about it, saying that could the girl imagine this and also her father would ask for autographs from her and from second herself. At this moment, the girl could not contain her laughter, saying that she would follow our hero. They sat in our hero's room and laughed. The girl was inspired by his words. The young man realized that somehow Iko the Beastman became his ally, watching closely this funny girl who was right in front of him. Starting today, the girl had to leave school, our hero reported, and she also had to get permission to join class as his chaperone. Iko was in the director's office, asked for it and looking at her, the director asked if our heroes could give her some time. Looking at the girl, the young man asked how long he had to wait and she said that she had an urgent meeting with the staff for lunch, so they would make a decision and say it. Our hero reported that in this case they expected good news. Now he asked them to forgive, leaving, he closed the door behind him. Sylvia asked the young man why he asked this. The young man felt that this sounded a little implausible. However, he was confident that his request would be fulfilled. Second explained that they were exchange students, plus he was a foreigner, before whose eyes bad things happened in relation to the beastmen. Sylvia understood what our hero was getting at and if the country the young man was from welcomed the beast people, then everything was fine. The young man noticed that even if not, it would create an incredibly repulsive impression. They will see the whole thing as a problem. Plus external staff are stuck in a situation where they can do nothing further if someone points a finger at the cover-up of the situation. The young man understood that the school did not want even more problems and they would want to solve everything with the least damage. So it is only natural that they would agree to fulfill his request. At this moment, Sylvia, listening to our hero, reported that the young man was very smart. The young man reported that everything was because he was number one. While they were sitting in the academy cafeteria, Main suddenly noticed them and, waving, he told Second Sama from afar that he recognized him, and then that he would make Ikos and his escort, asking if it was true. The young man, looking at Main, did not understand how he found out about this, had rumors really spread. Although only half a day had passed, our hero thought about it. The young man reported that the girl was an excellent healer, not being able to see this says a lot about the nature of this school. Main started laughing, saying that this was in our hero's repertoire. He simply adored his straightforwardness. The young man again wanted to tell Main that he was of the wrong orientation. But at that moment Sylvia again turned to our hero, asking him to lead him wisely. Iko didn't understand at all what our heroes were talking about. At that moment, someone distracted them. There was a teacher in front of them. Our hero, seeing him, probably said that the verdict was positive, and the teacher reported that it was approved without any complaints. Starting today, Iko will be in the classroom with our hero as his chaperone. Hearing this, our hero was very happy about it. Our hero understood that the teacher was insightful enough not to ask or ask stupid questions. But, if he asked him, the young man would bombard him with sarcastic moments about how he wanted the girl to be with him so that she would not be treated badly again. Sylvia, turning to the candidate, asked why our hero sent him to class A. At that moment the young man completely forgot that he had a night girlfriend here who needed to explain everything, and our hero thought that it would be easier to answer in a way that would no longer treat Iko badly, but the truth was different. Second thought that he briefly considered taking revenge on those who mistreated Iko, however, Iko herself did not want it, but simply said that she did not want to be with him. That was all, but the young man noted that it was all because she was his comrade. 
But anyway, now they were in the library, since they were just exchange students, time was worth precious, so Sylvia would need to quickly learn magic. From that moment on, a week passed and his kind, careful, and detailed lectures were bearing fruit. Sylvia mastered the fire element predator form from witchcraft in just three days. Moreover, he thought that Sylvia had learned some kind of trick. The girl thought that she had a strange feeling that she could use Curl's form. After that, it all ended with them borrowing books from the library about the four elements of the coral form. It was also a chance to learn them himself, as the young man expected, he was fluent in them. Sylvia also gave her all, locked herself in the library, she was obsessed and continued to study. He had already taught Sylvia everything she needed to know, so things were pretty peaceful for a while. After so many hours of sitting in the library and learning everything, our heroes spent time together like ordinary exchange students. At first glance, it seemed that the young man was idle, but the truth was that he had a goal to ingratiate himself with Maine. It seemed like he was already fulfilling this goal, but he thought he wasn't finished yet. Why did he want to lose trust in the guy? Because his goal is the grimoires of the fourth form. Maine mentioned in passing that form 4 is located inside the royal palace. Rank 1 Dungeon Aljin. Grimoires for each element are four forms that have a 10% chance of being dropped from the boss here. This is the easiest of the rank 1 dungeons, but at the moment for Sylvia, Eko and him, exploring the Algin's dungeon would be problematic and therefore he tried to get closer to Maine, so that they have a relationship in which the young man will take him to the royal palace if he asks. The next moment, when our hero looked at Eko, who was in front of him and asked what was in his hands, the young man, seeing the piece of paper, began to think. After all, he realized this late, but it turns out that Iko was not particularly literate. That is, she has problems with the common Japanese used in this world. During the time when he was in Mobian, not taking into account important days, the beast people spoke in their beast people language. This meant that Iko specifically learned Japanese in order to enroll in this school, despite the obstacles of reading grimoires. Using the dictionary, surprisingly, she was able to master the predator form for the wind and earth elements, but due to her lack of INT, she could not use them at all. In any case, although she looked stupid, she could turn out to be incredibly smart. At this moment, thinking about all this, our hero again remembered that she was handing him some piece of paper, and the young man asked to see what it was. On the piece of paper it was written about the 51st Witchcraft Congress, and about the admission of applicants. After reading, the young man reported, what was said here about the witchcraft convention. It looked like an annual event and it also looked like there was a prize for the winners. Thinking about what they could get, the young man suddenly saw that the prize was a ring of persecution. Seeing this, the young man said that they were going to a magic convention, turning to Iko, who did not understand anything at all. Ring of persecution. Despite the name, this is an incredibly powerful item. Effect, 10% chance of inflicting additional attacks after casting the double attack spell. Although it looked very simple, the ring actually helped like a god. At that moment, he heard that two girls were also discussing this competition, saying that the ring was not as cool. The young man thought that the girls standing not far from him were talking in a completely wrong way, because in fact this subject could be improved three times. In any case, if the hero is friends with a high-ranking blacksmith who can improve equipment, the ring of persecution will develop giving wonderful opportunities to its owner. Specifically, after a triple improvement, the chance of an additional attack increases from 10% to 25. However, it is difficult to believe that an item with such hidden capabilities would be lying around on the road, because it costs one and a half billion a cell. At least our hero recalled that this ring was so expensive in Mobian. But who knew how expensive it was in this world? Our hero, looking at the paper in front of him, thought that he was obliged to get it, no matter what it would cost. Our heroes are lucky, because the witchcraft convention will begin on the last day of the student program. Foreigners like him, for whom grimoires are more of a pastime, some would suspect something once he actually used the forms of both the predator and curl. If they quickly got away from this school, they could avoid problems. The day before the royal convention, standing in the dining room, the young man, turning to Maine, asked if the guy was going to a witchcraft convention, and the young man, hesitating, said that he was going. After all, being the second prince, he had to participate in it. Turning to our hero, asking if the young man was going to participate in this, our hero said without a twinge of conscience that of course he was going to participate in this. At this moment, Sylvia, who was sitting in front of the young man, choked on her drink, saying that why didn't she know about this? The young man reported that she had a wonderful reaction, 
reporting that because he did not talk about it. Turning to Maine, the young man asked why he wanted to participate in the witchcraft convention and Maine said that tomorrow his older brother would be here. Having heard about the first prince, second asked if Maine disliked him. But getting up from his seat, Maine said that he didn't talk about it. He and his brother just didn't get along very well. After all, his older brother was a talented suprematist. While Maine was a gifted magician, his older brother, whose strength was in swordsmanship, constantly looked down on him. The young man called him always a weakling. In addition, without agreeing with him, his older brother believes that they are rivals for the throne, so he saw Maine as a threat. Although his brother was going to attend the convention as a spectator, being the commander of the First Order of Knighthood, Maine was sure that his real goal was to show who was the best in front of everyone. Hearing this, the young man thought about what the First Prince, commander of the First Order of Knighthood means, however, he seemed to be not a very good person. Hearing all this, Sylvia just silently thought about her own thoughts. It was clear that he was one of those high-ranking bad people from the knightly order who treated Sylvia rudely. This means that the first prince was their head. Our hero, moving away from his thoughts, asked whether Maine could have missed the witchcraft convention, pretend to be sick or something. Maine said that this was impossible, because then his older brother would say that even if his weak, clueless younger brother attended the Academy of Magic, the young man was too cowardly to appear at the witchcraft convention. Our hero thought about how difficult it was to be a prince. At that moment, he was distracted from his thoughts by Sylvia, saying that she also owned the curl form that morning. Hearing this, our hero asked why he didn't know about it. At this point, the girl made a sarcastic expression on her face, saying that because she didn't say it. Our hero realized that she repaid him in the same coin. Day of the witchcraft convention. All the students who wanted to participate gathered in the stands. Our hero, watching this, decided to listen to what the guys were talking about. The guys discussed the prize ring, saying that many didn't even know what it was and had never heard of it. Someone reported that last year the 50th anniversary was celebrated. But nothing significant happened, because there were fewer participants, and the rules were revised, and now it is declining. Even though these guys were future magicians, our hero was very surprised that they did not know about the values of the Ring of Persecution. Of course, without any improvements, 10% additional attack seems negligible, but it is impossible that they do not know about the equipment improvement. The guys also reported that they heard that one of the spectators would be his majesty, but surprisingly, they could only look at class A and the guys said that it was understandable, because in class A there was a second prince, and there were rumors that they were not on good terms. Discussing this, talking about how isn't the prince the first to mistreat his younger brother, second thought that, nevertheless, years at the academy, the battle of the first and second princes would be forced everywhere. This was quite unnatural, and he did not think that the reason was in Maine himself. There was a possibility that one principal was manipulating their reputation. Did he really hate Maine that much? This Klaus, Maine, turning to our hero, greeted him, and the young man asked if the guy would skip the line. Then Maine reported that he would immediately be in the semi-finals. Hearing this, our hero then hoped that they would not collide until the finals. Smiling at second, Maine reported that they would meet in the finals. The witchcraft convention is held in tournament style. Seven participants on the left end of the tournament line while the young man was on the right. Maine needs only one victory to qualify for the finals, while our hero needed two. However, there was one thing that was unknown to him and that was what he was going to tell Maine. The next moment our hero asked the young man what should have been done at the witchcraft convention. Hearing this, Maine was surprised and asked if the young man had really signed up without having any idea about it. The young man asked if this destruction of each other was magic. Then Maine reported that it was not the same at all. Our hero began to wonder if it was necessary to simply defeat each other. But Maine reported that the witchcraft convention was holding a crown of competitions. So there was no need to destroy anything. Crown of Contests, originally used in PvP, this item allows you to conduct it without risking your life. After all, the use of any equipment, abilities and other things has detailed rules. If they were wondering why there was no risk to life, it was all because what was happening inside the competition created by the crown was imaginary. Their HP and mana are also imaginary, along with incoming and outgoing damage. Initially with a PvP duel that uses the dual crown. People, while the duel is carried out in a real competition of blood and flesh, as expected, die when their HP drops to zero. However, with the crown of the competition everything is imaginary. If this is a competition, then even if his HP drops to zero, then he lost the competition. It will simply end, and whatever it was, everything will return to normal. 
that is why the players said that it was for cowards, but some inquisitive players were fascinated by the freedom of the competition given by the rules of the crown, which is why they tried all possible options, creating entertaining competitions that were completely different from the banal duels, spreading them. But there was one catch to all this. Main reported that his attacks should be magical. This time this is the only condition. He asked whether our hero understood this. Listening to Main now, the young man understood and was firmly convinced that this game was not the most interesting and the one he expected. The game was starting and it was already match 3. The judge reported that first year students second from class A were against Dan from class F. At this moment, Iko was rooting for our hero, sitting in the stands, and Sylvia was just looking at our hero. The next moment, the competition crown was activated, a circle with a radius of 50 meters. Their competition arena lay within its boundaries. If one of the players went beyond the limits, then he lost. At this moment, the judge ordered the guys to get ready and our hero, looking at his opponent, heard the command start and then began his actions. The battle began, the judge commanded and our hero's opponent, named Dan, began to use his magic. From the color and design of this magic, one could tell that he was using the wind predator formula, thinking that this guy was not very experienced in it. The Opo Opo form is a normal attack, the Predator form, the area attack, the Curl form is a strong targeted attack, the fourth form is a strong area attack, and the fifth form is an incredibly strong area attack. The casting time of the spell increases accordingly, first comes Opo Opo, then Curl, then Predator, then fourth, then fifth. The young man thought that if he was harmed while casting the spell, it would be cancelled. This means that during competitions, spells with preparation from a predator and higher are useless. It was clear, I thought that the guy was probably trying to fool him like that. After all, the young man probably heard that second could not cast magic normally, and that, probably, the young man was mocking the number one in this world. Our hero thought to himself, telling the young man to get ready. Our hero used Opo Opo Wind Form against his opponent, the same one used Wind Predator Form and their forces collided. At this moment, our hero thought that there is one feature of the clash of magical forces, this technique of protecting the basis of which is to cancel the attack. The player will receive a little damage, but compared to the Opo Opo form, the recovery time after the Predator form is two times longer, which creates an advantage that does not show a difference in the strength of attacks. At that moment, our hero realized that Dan had fallen into his trap, saying that, probably, the young man wanted to be tortured to death or could choose how to die with indelible shame. The next moment, our hero used the form of Fire Curl. He had class 5, which is why the casting time was reduced by stage 2, and the attack power was 300% of the intelligence value. At that moment, his enemy realized that he was in trouble and there was an explosion, after which the enemy was defeated. Our hero realized that he used a lot of strength, but wanted to leave this 10% to play with the young man. But he realized that he won very quickly. The judge, noticing this, said that second had won, declaring our hero the winner. When the competition ends, the arena returns to normal, as if nothing had happened. At this moment, the young man was sitting in front of our hero, overcome with fear, and the young man reported that he had won. Iko, seeing that second was so strong, shouted about it throughout the arena. The young man reported that it was obvious, and Sylvia, approaching our hero, reported that our hero had overdone it, asking if everything was okay. At this moment, Second reported that everything was fine and the girl did not need to worry about it. In the end, he will become number one in this world. And besides, today they will say goodbye to them. And having grabbed the prize, they will immediately run away from this academy. Our hero informed his subordinates. Sylvia understood this, but asked the young man not to overdo it. Hearing that the girl again told him something about this, he asked her to stop being his mother, she didn't have to imagine herself. Hearing that she imagined herself, both his mother and girlfriend were surprised, and Iko at that moment was talking about Sekundu, so that he would give his best, supporting him. The young man entered the ring again, and at that moment Sylvia tried to move away from the young man's words that she was his mother. At this moment, the referee again announced that the semi-final had taken place, this was the second match. One year class a second versus four years class Akeda. It was a match where the winner would advance to the final against Main. The judge ordered that the guys could start and the next moment our hero saw that the guy rushed straight towards him with an attack. He, thinking that apparently the guy was a good fighter. In a magic-only competition between ordinary seagulls, the outcome depended on who attacked first. If this is the point of the main basis of combat on the Opo Opo form, 
which is created the fastest, it is a smart move. Our hero began to use the formula Oppo Oppo Wind and his opponent, seeing this, began to attack him with the same form. Our hero just silently looked at the young man, and he silently looked at him. This all led to a hopeless dead end. After all, after this they will conjure at the same time. But the magic created at the same time will collide and destroy each other, taking them back to the beginning. This is where the flaw in the competition lies. The young man understood. This is one of the reasons why he considered this game terrible. The next moment, sighing heavily, he thought that naturally everything would be between the newcomers. They would have done well. They would have managed to bring everything to a dead end. But unfortunately for him, he chose the former number one in the world as his enemy. Our hero thought about the young man who stood in front of him. The young man stood in front of him, reported that he wanted our hero to surrender, saying that he would reward him accordingly. Hearing this, the young man did not understand why he had to give up. Then his opponent reported that he could not allow him to fight his highness main. The guy reported that he would let his highness main win, after which he would have a friendly competition with his highness Klaus. Our hero didn't understand why the guy was telling him this, to which the guy replied that the young man did not deserve this, and that he would simply lose. Our hero asked if this was all, because he would beat both main and the first prince, to which his opponent said that this was not so, all only because the competition between main and Klaus makes sense. Our hero realized that, simply put, they were putting a political meaning into this competition. The young man again tried to attack his opponent, which at this rate they would not reach agreement on. To himself, our hero thought about this guy named Keith. It seems he was hired to help Main win. It must have been one of Klaus's sixes. It was supposed to be a friendly competition format. He would beat Main in front of everyone. Then the rumors in the waiting room were not far from the truth, exactly the same rumors that our hero heard before entering the arena. The young man was completely unhappy with this. After all, he was most dissatisfied with such negotiations with him in a hopeless situation and efforts to force him to surrender for the good of the cause. Turning to his opponent, our hero asked if he really thought that everything would go as he had planned and attacked him again. Then the young man used a counterattack and they fought like that for some time. Our hero understood that his opponent was ready to confront him. Naturally nothing would work out that way. So this was an opportunity, he would show everyone a serious battle. At that moment, the enemy saw that our hero took out his bow. But how did he do this in only a magical competition? His enemy must have been interested in this, the young man wondered. However, it is already late. At this moment, our hero mentally addressed Sylvia, telling the girl to look more closely, after which he fired his arrow directly at his opponent. Sylvia at that moment looked at the arena in surprise. Magic shooting is one of the miracles, so it uses sorcery, and that's the second reason why this game was terrible. To say the least, magic shooting draws witchcraft onto the bow, so that arrows are not used, so his opponent was stunned by this technique, trying to stand in place. Our hero thought that this was probably his goal for this first prince. At that moment, the enemy realized that our hero had guessed everything. A competition where only magical attacks mattered. This was definitely a terrible game. This is why deadlock can happen, and Prince Klaus definitely has some kind of technique for circumventing the rules. As our hero remembered, Sylvia's father said that he was a swordsman. It is quite possible that he uses magical fencing as long as during the competition he has such a trump card. Prince Klaus will never lose to Maine. The young man was sure that he could tear his brother apart, even without getting a change, as a competition, in which our hero was now in. The young man informed his opponent that this was a very low thing. He had to know firsthand what a terrible act it was. By stabilizing the sight with nightly shooting, increase your strength with silver general shooting and strengthen the impulse with earth curl form. This is a combination of three abilities. At this moment, our hero, using this combination, saw that his opponent began to run away. But it was in vain. Having forged the young man again, the enemy was defeated and the judge, seeing this, announced that second was the winner. All the guys looking at the arena at that moment were very surprised and voted for our hero. Our hero's opponent, returning to the first prince, reported that he was really sorry. But the prince said that everything was in order. Now he needs to change his plans, but it looks like he found himself a nice gem. Maybe it was the so-called second, who would win if he recruited him, and his younger brother would remain a fool. Our hero's opponent told the prince that this guy was a pretty strong opponent. Turning to Keith, the prince asked if Keith really thought that the young man could refuse his offer of the first commander of the knightly order. It was impossible to refuse such a thing, Kate said, and the prince reported that in some academy there would be hiding someone capable of combining magic. He thought that he was not mistaken in his visit, because second would become the first marching pawn. 
Here they reported that they were now approaching the finals. All this time we have been watching our hero thinking that second Sama is really so strong. But he had such a premonition. At that moment, Main stood opposite our hero in the arena and they were about to fight. Second reported that he was very sorry for what he hid from Main. Now, probably, the young man despised him. Main reported that this was not so, now he liked the young man even more. Then our hero said that next time he should take him to the royal palace, because he would have read the fourth form and Main would agree with him. The next moment the young man wanted to order something, which our hero had to do to him in return. But the next moment the judge interrupted him, telling the guys to get ready, and then start their fight. And the young man simultaneously used the form of wind against each other. Obviously, the young man will not use magical shooting. He will be rudely bypassing the rules, and against an opponent who is not capable of anything other than witchcraft. Besides, there is no fun in it. Our hero thought that the young man wanted to destroy the attack again and take them back to the very beginning and it seems that his expectations were instantly not justified. At that moment, the spell was cancelled and our hero, looking at his opponent, thought that the young man had forcibly changed the timing of the spell. Of course, if he is attacked while casting a spell, it will be interrupted, but if he starts casting it in the middle of an attack, he will be stopped. At this point, against our hero, Main used the wind curl form, and the young man realized that his ability rank was higher than Main's, which is why he cast the spell faster, which is why, even if he starts later, his curl form from Main will be summoned simultaneously, and will also be cancelled. At that moment, Main saw how strong our hero was, who resisted his attacks. Seeing the young man's gaze, Second understood that this was a look that should never be shown. It literally said that it was his ace in the hole that did not work. Second didn't take Main seriously. He lectured him about not underestimating others, and yet he ended up doing the same thing. Second understood that Main was serious. If he took him seriously, then he would respectfully do the same. Ultimate Magic in Mobius Online he will perform it with the dignity of a man who has defended the title of wise general 22 times in a row. Therefore, he suggested that the prince watch carefully. Using the fire curl form our hero was going to attack the young man. He used the same form of answer, saying that it would not work. At such a distance, it is simply out of the affected area, and the feeling has strengthened within him after so many years of experience. He knew this even without measuring. Plus, to begin with, he was not preparing an attacking curl form, it was something else, and when Main saw the attack, he understood that he was moving for the next one. The next moment, he realized that he had not seen the magical outlines that our hero was using. The young man reported that it could have been used anyway, because magic is not always offensive, it can be used to hide your next move. Our hero's next move was Earth Predator form this is a powerful area of effect spell with a long creation time. But the resulting effect was not a joke at all. At that moment, he attacked his opponent in main, seeing a giant wall in front of him, was stunned. Second summoned a wall to restrict the enemy's freedom. This is also a respected magical tactic. These are the very basics of magical battles. No one loses anything by learning this, and now it was completed. Using the curl of water form, our hero was able to attack main, so that second stood in front of him the next moment when the young man tried to get up. At this point, Main reported that he had lost. Our hero, looking at this, did not understand why the young man reported that he had lost and laughed. Being absolutely angry, looking at his opponent, Main did not expect such a reaction and did not understand at all what our hero was talking about. At that moment, all the guys, looking at the arena, thought that Second had done it. Main told the young man that he was strong, to which our hero said that if his curl form had been at least 5th grade, then our hero would probably have lost. Being on the verge of defeat, without knowing it he put him in the wrong light. There was not a shred of strength here. At this moment, Main was very upset, saying that wasn't the young man really strong. Our hero asked if Main was angry, because he lost to someone who looked down on him. Wasn't the young man furious, which Main looked at and said in the next moment that he wasn't angry. But our hero asked the guy not to lie to himself and if he didn't get angry here, he would remain that way for the rest of his life. At that moment someone interfered with them, it was the first prince. Speaking of what a great experience it would be, referring to second. He talked about how, as a young man, he told his stupid younger brother that he had that kind of spirit. And he suggested repeating this to him again and again, because he had caught a glimpse of his capabilities, saying that second was truly capable. The first prince said that he was giving his special permission, informing our hero to join him and learn leadership with him. Being under the direct supervision of Klaus, First Prince means that he is guaranteed a position in the highest echelon of the First Order of Knighthood. In addition, when Klaus ascends the throne,
he will receive promotion. Even higher, this is an incredible situation, fully aware of this. However, if he refuses this invitation, it will be tantamount to general publicity that he has chosen Klaus First Prince as his enemy. It is impossible to refuse this, that is exactly what everyone thought. That is, for a normal person. But our hero reported that his answer was negative. Hearing this, everyone on the podium, including all of our hero's subordinates, as well as Mayan and the First Prince, were surprised. At this moment, the first prince told our hero to repeat this and the young man, smiling, said that he refused. Main looked at our hero and was surprised. Then the guy showed him with his eyes that everything was fine. He had predicted it. Now Klaus couldn't get what he wanted out of Main. The young man decided that in the end he would come and try to recruit him. After all, he is the big boss of this suspicious knightly order. Contorting his face, the first prince said that the young man probably wanted this. Our hero reported that even before the match he promised Mayne that after everything he would go with him to the royal palace. Hearing this, Mayne was surprised, and our hero realized that the meaning of the words between the lines meant that he had already cooperated with the second prince. He certainly created the agreement just a couple of minutes ago, and the judge nearby could witness it. At this moment, the first prince asked if it was true, looking at the judge with his menacing gaze. The judge was silent for a while and said that it was so. The contract between the second prince and second has already been made. Wedging in and the petition is essentially a public recruitment attempt. Even if he is the first prince, this is a violation of etiquette. The prince said that it was indeed unfortunate. But from that moment on, the prince told the young man to show his loyalty to the second prince. Main, hearing that second Sama was on his side, was incredibly touched. And our hero understood that this guy at the end forgot the lesson that he taught him up to that moment. And now it was time to continue this lesson, our hero said. Therefore, Main could continue to compete with him until he finally became brutal. Main told the young man to be gentler, because he would not be able to defeat him. Second said that the young man was a fool. It was his trait that needed to be changed, which is why the prince called him his weak, stupid younger brother. Main reported that it was so rude, telling Second Sama that he was very strict with him, because he was almost like his older brother. At this moment, touching the young man's forehead with his fist, our hero informed him not to put them in one line because they were friends. Hearing this, Main said with tears in his eyes that he agreed and smiled at our hero. At this moment, moving through the academy, the first prince thought that he was very annoyed by his damned brother. At that moment, he entered the director's office, calling Memento, asking if she was here. The girl was in the office asking his highness to calm down. Then the guy told her to shut up and quickly give him all the information on this sickening scoundrel second. The girl, handing him a piece of paper, gave the prince information. He, grabbing him, looking at the information, asked if this was not just a description of how the young man spent his time at the academy. Memento reported that the young man was a man of even greater mysteries. Even the main nation of Zippon, where he came from, was still unknown. Having crumpled the paper, the prince was very dissatisfied and, throwing it on the floor, left the office. Then the director thought about what she had heard that the prince was temperamental, but not that much. Although she thought it was second kun, she should have kept a closer eye. After receiving the ring of persecution as a prize for victory, our heroes escaped and left the Royal Academy of Magic behind. And somehow his plan to obtain magic was completed. Now he just needed to somehow learn the fourth and fifth forms and he was done. Standing in front of his companions, the young man announced his current goal, saying that in any case they were going to focus on gaining experience in the dungeons. They will do research until Eco reaches intermediate level. At this moment, both girls stood in front of our hero's bed, listening carefully to what he was saying. In general, he realized that the concept of the general level of their abilities should take precedence. From this point on, they had to concentrate on their efforts to explore the dungeon for some time. Sylvia realized that they were going to Royce's dungeon again, and Eco, hearing this, was very happy that she would finally go to the dungeon. The young man reported that this time the dungeon was not Royce. This time they will go to a rank 2 dungeon. They follow Liptafatha. The Liptafatha dungeon doesn't spawn a ton of monsters and they seem to have high defense, but low attack. Our hero reported that this would be a good training for their coordination. Plus the stone shell shield drops from their boss, the stone turtle. An ideal item for Eko. Hearing this, Sylvia asked if the young man really said about a shield for Eko. The young man reported that it was a suitable task to repel the attacks of monsters on the front line. So shouldn't they go now and improve his command of the shield? Telling Eko, the girl reported that she understood everything. 
Sylvia tried to stop them, but the young man and Eco did not listen to her, and our hero reported that there would be moments when she would be hurt through the shield and in order to be prepared for this it was necessary to study healing magic. She was so happy and said that everything was approved. Turning to second, Sylvia asked if he really planned to put such an innocent young girl on the front line. Then our hero reported that everything was normal, because she would become indomitable in the blink of an eye. But Sylvia said that this was not what she meant, asking whether our hero understood this. The same one, not attaching any importance to this, reported that they could not go to their goal. Arriving in the city for armor and provisions, our hero bought a large shield the size of Eco. There was no armor suitable for Eco's body, so instead they bought high-end small equipment. Altogether it cost 4 million SL, which is much more expensive than his equipment. The next moment after that, they stopped at the Great Royal Library, where Eko learned the pawn shield art and the spear shield art. Our hero informed Eko that they would go to look at the grimoire of healing magic in the church and the next moment coming to the church, our hero informed the nun that he would like to look at the grimoire of weak healing magic. Handing the book to Eko, the girl sat down to read it carefully and the magic of healing, this small treatment was studied. Now it was time to leave, and if they rode four hours on horseback from the royal capital and another thirty minutes through the agricultural town of Peho, they would find the dungeon they needed. The next moment they arrived in the agricultural town of Peho, and soon after arriving they began exploring the underground. During the first twenty-three weeks of their leisure time, they focused on getting Eko the shield art ability. Eko easily mastered the shield art abilities that she should have started, excluding from the five art of the bishop's shield. They had the following effects. Pawn shield arts is a common defense. Spear shield art act as an armor-piercing reflection. Knight's shield art provides protection and repulsion. And golden general's shield art provides both area defense and repulsion. A few days later, also their tenth entry into this dungeon, Eko began to clearly characterize himself as a paladin. Standing in defense of our heroes, he used his shield against the terrible monsters. Sylvia, seeing this, asked if the girl was okay to which Eko did not understand what Sylvia was asking her about and our hero informed Sylvia that thanks to her shield art, her health and defense had increased significantly. Our hero thought that it looked like the girl was gradually growing into a promising tank. The young man thought that the time had come for the art of the bishop's shield. Eko was very surprised when she heard this, then our hero thought that it was the right time, because they had advanced to the boss, located at the deepest point of the dungeon. The boss of the dungeon is a huge monster called the Stone Turtle. She could boast of high iron protection, but does not have enormous strength. Speaking to Eko, Second told her to use her abilities at his command to protect them, even if they made no mistakes. It will take about 15 minutes to win, and if they make a mistake, they will start over, asking whether Eko can handle it. The girl confidently answered that she could. The next moment our hero commanded that they began the operation. The conditions for obtaining the bishop's shield art are, use the shield art to fully defend against 100 consecutive boss attacks that are stronger than the enemy. The main nuance is full protection. Roughly speaking, she couldn't even take one point of damage, which is why she wouldn't have many ways to defend herself. She will deflect ranged attacks with the spear shield art or parry them and deflect them back with the knight's shield art or the golden general's shield art. Parry is a phenomenon that is provoked when a player synchronizes an opponent's attack and uses defense at the right moment, which protects him from any damage and causes a small knockback effect. Now when it comes down to it, it's a music game and it was damn hard to master. However, once she learns the timing of her attacks, she can constantly defend herself with parries and can fight with an insane advantage, commanding the knight to use the golden general and spear. However, in the beginning it is quite difficult to find the right moment to parry. This stone turtle attacks in a rather primitive and ordinary way, but nevertheless, at the beginning it is quite difficult to find the right moment to parry, our hero thought. At this moment, Eko was dodging the attack that the turtle inflicted on her. Sylvia was shocked when she saw this. Our hero asked that they had only slowed down a little, asking if they could continue. Eko said that she could. Using weak treatment, the girl healed herself and again she went after the enemy. From that moment on, they fought with the stone turtle for almost two hours and in the end, Eko received the bishop's shield art by defeating this turtle. Second reported that now Sylvia was her turn. Wasn't it time for her to learn magical shooting? Hearing that our hero proposed this to her, the girl reported that she would be happy if she could. The young man said that she could, because from now on they would begin to master magical shooting. When Sylvia heard about these offers, she was happy to hear it. Then Eko approached our hero, asking what was wrong with her. Seeing the girl's glowing eyes, our hero announced that today he was going to the dungeon to experience the art of the bishop's shield. 
asking Iko that if she fights the stone turtle, it will get a stone shell shield and she was very happy to hear this. Lately, Iko has always been happy. This girl was supposed to look like a cat, but inside she was definitely a dog. Our heroes came to the dungeon again and second reported that they had to begin fulfilling the conditions for combining shooting magic. Sylvia agreed with him and thanked our hero. To prepare the shooting magic combination ability, he needed to use magic to kill a thousand monsters and 25% of the health that was taken away by the shooting. She will easily fulfill these conditions, our hero thought about a week ago, looking at Sylvia. Looking at him, the young man suggested that she try the art of the bishop's shield and surprise them. Eco used sword art and was able to win. Bishop sword art has the effect of enhanced defense. It protects while enhancing VIT. If the art reaches 9 ranks, then the player will be able to defend with 600%. If his characters have a high VIT, then there will be a strong ability that can even repel attacks from monster class bosses. So far, the young man said that it was an incredibly powerful ability, but it spent quite a lot of mana and suggested that Eco use it only when necessary. At this point, Eco became very upset, saying that it was amazing that she had finally become useful. So this attack somehow touched the notes of X soul. At this moment, Sylvia reported that she had learned it and acquired a new skill, magic shooting combination. The young man, having heard this, said that it was worth checking it out using the curl form. The girl listened to him and did as our hero said, asking if he was sure. Upon shooting rank 5, fire curl form 9th grade, it was a combination of two attacks and the girl, using them, was able to hit her opponent. Our hero thought that she had the 9th rank in the form of a fire curl, which means that the critical damage was 1612. He thought this was quite worthy for use. If they turn her pawn shooting into a rook or the silver general upgrades her curl form with it, magic shooting will become a mainstay skill for the rear. Thinking that the young man wanted Sylvia to give it her all. At that moment, when the girl shot, Sylvia was amazing, Eko said. The next moment, when our heroes returned home, the young man announced that he wanted to do this. Standing opposite Sylvia, talking about this too. Hearing. The girl blushed and did not understand why the young man suddenly decided to say this sharply. But our hero reported that he wanted to do it right here and now, pressing on the girl. Sylvia, seeing him nearby, asked him to wait, saying that it was not too early for this and asking if they needed to get to know each other better first. Our hero said he couldn't help but become stronger. Hearing about this, Sylvia realized that she had hit the young man in vain. The young man reported that now that they had finally reached the ring of persecution they had to become stronger. Sylvia said it was true. Then the young man apologized for this and asked her to understand that this also affected her bow of the fiery wolf. Eco is the same as her future stone turtle shield. At that moment, looking at the girl, we realized that she had already fallen asleep. After all, enhanced equipment was incredibly important, it would cause so much damage. But now it would do it using rook shooting and the girl said that it was about 3000 or so. Second reported that if she enhanced the flame wolf bow to the final version, then this number would increase to 12,000. Adding 3000 with improvement gives 12,000, which is more than 4 times. Sylvia said that if the improvement was so significant, then it was definitely important. But when it comes to improvement, our hero thought that she realized that they would need a blacksmith, asking how she could get one. There were four possible paths. The first path is when they create a team, register with the guild, and there they accept recruits. It's easier to recruit people to be part of a group than to be a solo member. However, it is impossible to say with certainty when they might have met a good blacksmith. He might not have a reliable blacksmith. The second way is to search for the recruitment of people who are able to learn blacksmithing. If a young man is lucky enough to find one, then there are a lot of advantages to the strategy. It is possible to make someone a blacksmith from zero, but the chance of a collision is small. Third, recruit an active blacksmith. The girl thought that this was the most realistic path, but there were not many prospects in it, our hero reported. After all, blacksmithing is a valuable profession. It's pretty reckless to ask to quit your job for some strangers you've never heard of. The fourth way was probably what the young man considered the best. At this moment, Sylvia asked what came to his mind and our hero offered to buy a slave. Having heard about the slave, Sylvia reacted quite easily, saying that in this case it would be quite easy to find. Our hero didn't understand why she wasn't angry. Then the girl did not understand why she suddenly had to be angry with her. Sylvia explained that if a young man was looking for a slave with a background in blacksmithing, it was a good idea. 
We are talking about a slave market. No one there will mind looking at their characteristics. The young man was surprised that she agreed to this. Since she was a female knight, he thought she would blush terribly, say that it was outrageous or that the boy just wanted to misbehave and then probably hit second. But that didn't happen. The young man said that it was wonderful if she reacted like that. In this case, tomorrow they would return to the capital and visit the slave trader. Sylvia said that she thought the young man should wear this outfit. Hearing the girl talk about this, the young man remembered that rare outfit. Looking rich, he will be served even better, saying that it was a good idea and everything was decided. He will prepare it. The capital of the kingdom of Vincetan. Our heroes arrived at Morris's slave company, where they were met by a man who was the president of the company named Philip. He was the most influential man of the local lands. In the end, the influence of these clothes was truly amazing. Our hero thought, sitting on the opposite side of this man. Its presence alone gives incredible results. Second reported that he was looking for a blacksmith slave and asked if it was possible to look at the characteristics of several slaves to analyze them. Philip reported that in this case the young man should have allowed him to immediately introduce these slaves to our hero. Looking at the people who entered this room, our hero understood everything, thinking that he was finally able to understand why Sylvia was not angry. He thought that it was a misunderstanding on his part. Then, thinking that they were looking for blacksmiths here, but even so, the slaves cheered him up, because he expected them to be young men. Philip asked if someone bent down to our hero. The young man asked to give him some time, because he was unpleasantly surprised by the fact that they were all adult men because of this, none of them liked him. Now they showed him their characteristics and the young man sorted them. As for the desired characteristics for a blacksmith, he needed strength, agility and luck. It will also be useful to have a good intelligence and a class completely suitable for such a description, because this is the blacksmith. Besides, since they can become blacksmiths, the weapon of a man who is going to become number one in the world, then he would like them to have high characteristics by nature. Our hero realized that this was not good, because among them there was not the one he was looking for, the young man informed Philip. The latter apologized very deeply to him, saying that in this case only criminal slaves remained at his disposal. After hearing about criminal slaves, our hero thought to himself that he did not know how they could differ from ordinary slaves, but as long as there was an excellent blacksmith among them, he did not care, and our hero agreed, saying that they should be shown to him. Since they are criminal slaves, he could not bring them here and asked our hero to go with him to the slave detention cells. Our hero agreed with this and asked Sylvia and Eco to stay put. At that moment, our hero went along with Philip. It seemed that Morris's slave-owning company was quite wealthy. Apparently the slaves here live in external conditions only a handful of people and here looked like the desperate. At that moment, our hero was looking at the cameras that were in front of him and Philip said that there were criminal slave cells here and one of the prisoners was a blacksmith. After looking at the man who was sitting in the cell, the young man said that he would not suit him and Philip reported that he was terribly sorry that they were not able to meet his expectations. The next moment he saw the camera that was in front of our hero. He was told that this camera looked terribly protected. The young man asked what was behind it. Opening the camera, Philip reported that it was the least he could do for our hero. The next moment, the young man saw an elf who was sitting in this cell and Philip represented an assassin who served the Duchess who was executed the other day because using a slave contract, she was forced to kill by force. The court decided that all the crimes were not her fault, she was pardoned, and instead of being executed, she was sent to the company of Morris. Our hero saw a dark elf in front of him. The girl was talented, nevertheless, a peace clause was attributed to her in his contract with the kingdom of Castal, so if our hero used her, it would most likely be as a sex slave or maid, or as he saw. Even though she is a dark elf, no one has taken her away all this time, which causes great inconvenience. Our hero thought about peacefulness. Could the girl not attack? This is a pretty serious limiter. But no one took the dark elf, our hero thought, thinking about how this could have happened, because he thought that such a hot girl should have been in great demand. By the way, Philip said about this that people constantly complained about the limiters. Our hero knew that there was discrimination of beastmen and persecution of dark elves in the kingdom of Castal. They must have set up some rules to deal with it. In other words, not to mention the dark elves as sex slaves, even the very existence of such a slave was extremely shameful. Turning to the elf, our hero asked to show him his characteristics. Elf just exhaled and showed him. At that moment, our hero realized what immediately stood out was her insanely high dexterity. Besides her intelligence strength was quite high. Dark elves are a versatile race and specialize in fencing, shooting and magic. It seems that her characteristics correspond to the game range, 
and yet the young man did not understand how it happened that her luck and speed were both so high. Addressing the elf, the young man asked what her skills were. The girl reported that her skill was fencing, shooting, magic, string manipulation, hidden murder. After listening to all this, our hero realized that abnormally high dexterity improves not only her magic, but also string manipulation. And the reason for her high speed is also that it improves her hidden kill. This means that her class can follow the blacksmith's branch. Our hero at this moment, thinking about it all, asked how much Philip wanted for this elf. At that very moment, our hero decided to buy a dark elf, because it costs 16 million SL. The brilliant embryo of a magnificent blacksmith, for such a price, means that this world was already doomed. If our hero was ready to buy an elf, then Philip reported that he would make a slave contract. This is a contract used for magic and slaves, the young man had seen it in Mobius before. The master and the slave are bound by the contract on the magic of slaves, cannot go against the points specified in this contract. This magic is not about what happens after the contract is broken. It is about an all-powerful mystical force that does not even allow you to try to break it. But in fact, there are a couple of dirty tricks for violating the contract without punishment. At that moment, Philip was asking our hero what he thought about the points of the contract. Our hero, thinking about it, realized that he thought so much about unnecessary things that he did not even read the lines of the contract. Then he realized that, in fact, the meaning was the master treats the slave humanely, and the slave obeys his master. These are normal items. Nevertheless, there is one thing interesting to him here. This is the very last point number 19. He cannot attack any people. Our hero thought about the fact that if a girl is attacked, does it mean that she will be attacked non-stop? The young man asked if Philip could do something about it. But Philip reported that he could not do anything, since it was a state decree and there was nothing to be done. Our hero reported that even if it was so, he signed a contract with these points. Philip, seeing how our hero signed the contract, said that it was fine and also at that moment the Dark Elf also signed this contract. The magic of slavery and now the magic of slavery is concluded. Thanks for the purchase, Philippa accompanied our hero with his slave. Walking along with the elf, our hero, addressing her, asked what her name was and the girl reported that she did not have one. Our hero, addressing her I don't have one, said that they were going up to the reception now. The girl meant that she didn't have a name when she heard that our hero said it. The young man thought that his sparkling joke did not pass, and besides, this dark elf made a complete disgust look despite the fact that she was a slave, the girl was very brave, our hero thought. But nevertheless, she does not have her own name. What kind of life she had, conceived with a young man. In this case, I thought it would be problematic to contact her, asking if she didn't mind if the young man gave her a name and the girl was certainly glad that the young man could do it. Our hero at this moment began to think about the dark elf, because she had sweet chocolate skin, purple purple hair. Purple, the young man thought about this color. The next moment, some time passed, but the young man could not come up with anything. After a while, our hero said that he wanted to call her Yukari, asking what the girl's name was. Closing her eyes and bowing to our hero, she informed that her name would be Yukari, she would be at his mercy, addressing her master. Our hero said that his name was second, he would later introduce his comrades to the girl, and looking at our hero Yukari agreed with him, following the young man. Sylvia, seeing the second, said that the young man had really found a good blacksmith. At that moment, she saw an elf next to our hero and smiled at a new friend, saying that he probably should have been that this beautiful elf girl was a blacksmith. The young man reported that it was Yukari and from today she will study blacksmithing. Sylvia was surprised and thought that they did not expect the blacksmith's girl, so why did she not think about such a possibility, thinking that she did not like it? Iko, on the contrary, was very happy, saying that they had to get along, referring to Yukari. Yukari, turning to Iko-sama, hoped that they would get along too. Iko also reported that the girl addressed her simply as Iko, without all that. Then the elf reported that she hoped that they would get along, referring to Iko-san and the next moment Iko again told the girl to call her simply Iko. After long attempts, the elf was finally able to call the girl by her first name. Our hero, watching this scene, remembered that Iko had his own amazing and unique style of communication. Now they also have Yukari, who never loses her temper. Pointing to a girl who was not far from them, our hero reported that this is Sylvia. Despite her appearance, she is an excellent magic archer. After hearing about the magic archer, Yukari asked our hero again, and the young man reported that she would understand everything over time. And now they had to return to the city of Paho, and there they would already discuss what they would do next. The young man thought that he was excited at first, however, he was mistaken. 
During their journey to Peho, he tried to deepen his relationship with Yukari and asked her a lot of things. As a result, she behaved quite restrained and no matter what the young man asked, Yukari answered coldly and eerily. Since the young man was also not good at communication, he quickly gave up this idea. Although she was a slave, she was also a valuable companion. If possible, the young man would like to get closer to the girl. If their relationship is unfavorable, even if she becomes an excellent blacksmith, our hero thought that the girl could leave, but eventually came to an answer because he just had to ask her directly. When our hero arrived in Peho, Second asked Yukari if the girl could tell him about her past. Then she asked if it was an order and the young man reported that if she did not want to, she could not answer because she was not obliged to do it. The girl said that then, with all due respect, she refused. Our hero, seeing how she behaved, did not expect that he would be able to get a lot from her. It was all due to the fact that Yukari hides a lot of emotions in answering questions, thinking about whether this was caution or agitation. Maybe it was a bluff or maybe fear, our hero wondered. After all, there was definitely something in her past, so she talked a little about herself and behaved like a harmless slave. Besides, she was afraid that her past would be revealed. The reason for hiding her past was somewhere at a time when he was number one in this world and recalled that he was often asked what he did for a living. It was as if he had once experienced the same feelings as Yukari. Answering this question, he always replied that he was engaged in real estate, thinking that why did he keep it a secret? and all because it was it would have destroyed their innocent relationship. If people find out from the rumors that a person was unemployed, then they will definitely stare at him with such harsh looks. In fear of this, he constantly kept his distance from the others. He acted on the front, saying that he had time and money, so being number one in the world was his hobby. Yukari has no such reasons for this, and yet he thought that he and the girl had a lot in common, because she probably thought that our hero would not accept her if she still told all this. The young man was sure that she was having these thoughts. If that was the case, then in order to reveal his real identity, they needed to make the girl believe that these people would definitely accept her for who she was, even if she revealed her past. Second thought that it would be quite difficult. But if he knew what he was doing, then he had only one thing left and that was to try. The next moment, interrupting himself from these reflections, getting out of bed, our hero reported that in any case it was time for dinner, and therefore he went down to the tavern. Addressing all his comrades, our hero asked if they should have created a group. Sylvia, hearing this, said that at last the young man decided and Iko was also glad to hear it. Yukari asked if the young man was talking about the group. Our hero remembered that he had not told Yukari about their goals. Second reported that he was aiming to become number one in the world. Sylvia and Iko are colleagues helping him and turning to Yukari. The young man would like her to help him too. Yukari only replied that she was the master's slave. If there was something she was capable of, she would definitely help him. But that meant number one in the world. The young man reported that if she did not know this, then he would tell her, asking if it was so. The girl reported that she really did not understand what our hero was talking about. But the young man thought it was useless, because the girl would not believe him. Turning to second dono, Sylvia asked what time it had already been on her mind, but asked how the young man was going to make the number one dream in the world a reality. Our hero reported that it was a great question, telling Sylvia Virginia. Looking at the guy, she didn't understand why he was using her full name. At that moment, the young man reported that if she was interested in the question of how someone becomes number one in the world, then the answer was simple. The young man reported that it was necessary to study each amazing ability as much as possible and defeat their owners. In other words, he just needed to win every title fight. Hearing this, Sylvia could not believe her ears, then our hero tried to explain in more detail. Titles are the tops of any skill, and he wanted to explain this by the example of shooting. Basically skills called shooting. There are seven side skills ranging from pawn shooting to improved rook shooting. To get the title of shooting, to begin with, the player needs to maximize each of the nine side skills up to the ninth rank. This was the first requirement. Second requirement, presence and victory at title fights, which are held twice a year in summer and winter. Title duel is a style of tournament confrontation, where those who have fulfilled the first requirement fight in the hope of getting the title. And if he fulfills the second requirement, then he will be rewarded with the privilege of fighting with the current holder of the title. Therefore, if he wins the title holder, then he can officially take the title of armor-piercing demon general for himself. Other ways to get the title are as follows. He had to be the first to remember the first demands in the north or defeat the others in a title duel. It followed from this that the same title may not belong to different people at the same time. From this it is clear that the title is the absolute possession of the skill. 
We can assume that in theory and in practice this is the highest status, and if we could achieve it for each skill, then it is obvious that they would become the best. Naturally, winning each title is a significant enough factor to consider him number one in the world. But he believed that this was not enough for the young man to proclaim himself the real number one in the world. The Mobian's rank system included other criteria, and ranks were issued after combining each of them. However, to begin with, the young men really had to aim at winning every title, asking if Sylvia was familiar with title fights. The girl reported that it was natural, saying that probably second Dono says so that he will take part in them also for each skill. The young man reported that there was nothing surprising in this, because he was aiming at number one in this world. At that moment, Yukari jumped into the conversation, saying that it was impossible. The young man asked if she was really sure about it, and the girl said that it was impossible, addressing the owner. Then our hero asked why she thought so. The girl reported that this was the world. After all, it was impossible to be so powerful. The young man reported that this was not the reason, asking why Yukari thought so and she told him that it was impossible to be so powerful. Our hero asked about what kind of soil there was for this. Then Yukari reported that she thought that the young man should not talk so frivolously. Our hero stood his ground, saying that the girl should stop avoiding the question, asking for what reason she thought that they could not become stronger by turning to Yukari. Why it is impossible to become so powerful, why she decided so, but the girl only reported that this was the world. The young man kept up with her and asked why she thought so. At that moment she was ready to snap, talking about it but the next moment she said that it was unimportant and asked to forget. Our hero, seeing the reaction, was surprised. And at that moment, Yukari asked the young man to forget, asking if she could take her leave first. Our hero agreed with her, but he was thinking about what the girl wanted to tell him. Because if you think about the fact that she no longer has the status of an assassin, the answer itself suggests itself. It is quite possible that Yukari has not been brought up as a person since childhood. The life of an assassin is so hard. That's what she knew, the pain and cruelty of becoming stronger, and the inability to protect someone with such goals. That's why she got angry, saying that it was frivolous and that the young man was inclined to agree with her if she was talking to someone like him. Sylvia, seeing their conversation and hearing what they were talking about, said that the girl was quite dangerous, and the young man reported that it was probably so. She was mentally unstable, considering how she was chained in a slave prison before he bought her. It would most likely be innate, but she is still able to control herself well. Sylvia also noticed that the girl desperately wanted to say something, but it is clear that she kept it to herself by force. After asking about it, our hero asked what it was and Sylvia said that it seemed that way to her, asking what our hero thought. The young man reported that he thought she was afraid that her secret would be revealed. Sylvia only smiled when she heard this, then our hero did not understand why the girl was smiling like that. But apologizing, she said that she wasn't laughing at him, it's just that women sometimes have conflicting feelings. Winking at our hero, Sylvia reported. The young man only looked at her in surprise. At this moment, getting up from her seat, Sylvia tried to lift Eko, who had already dozed off, taking the girl to her room. For the first time since they met, the young man thought that Sylvia looked very dignified, but a paper handkerchief stuck to her leg when she left and he abruptly took back his words. The third rank dungeon of Siasparn. Our heroes came to the dungeon of the third rank, all for the benefit of the formation of the team. To form a team, they need to complete a team quest, to be more precise, having at least three participants. He and the group had to go to a rank three dungeon in less than two hours. Any rank three dungeon will do, so it was the simplest task. Our hero thought about the fact that he had not come to the dungeon of the third rank for a long time. Besides, he had entered the Assis Barn dungeon only once a very long time ago. At that moment, he completely forgot Assis Barn's nickname the Dungeon of the Kick in the Ass. At that moment, when they entered the dungeon, our heroes met goblins who began to attack Sylvia. Using magic shooting and a combination of pawn shooting in the shape of the Opo Opo fire, the girl attacked the goblin who was in front of her. Yukari, looking at this, said that everything was clear to her, and Sylvia, happy, coming to our hero reported that it was easy. But it was rank 3 and everything was obvious. Iko, who ran to fight the goblin and said it was really easy. Then Yukari asked the gentleman if it was normal. The young man said that it was a fair question, but she could see for herself what was about to happen before her eyes. And Iko used the golden general shield art to slay the goblins that were right in front of her. Yukari, watching this, said that the girl was just incredible. The young man reported that having strong warriors, both in the vanguard and in the rear, thanks to good coordination, they could pass the dungeon without any danger. At this rate, if he joined the slaughter, 
he would only interfere with their coordination training. He was just watching to see if he would forget the ambush and protected Yukari. And the Seasparn's boss is a monster named Knockout Goblin. This monster is huge, but it is slow and has almost no protection. He is considered an easy boss. However, he has 10 goblin sorcerers who can use magic. It can be unpleasant to fight against both the boss and them at the same time, the young man thought. But now with the current firepower, they will kill the boss in two strikes. And it takes one hit per magician, so there shouldn't have been any problems. At that moment, while he was looking at the boss, Iko appeared next to him, asking what their strategy was. The young man reported that as such, they did not have it. But I thought it was not good, because with her delight and sparks on her face, she simply could not be denied, looking at if at this moment. The young man reported that Iko would distract that big guy in the center of the arena, and had to detain him using the bishop's art, and the young man at this time with Sylvia would kill him. Iko Happy said that she understood everything and went to do her job. Addressing Sylvia, our hero informed her to act as usual, and turning to Yukari, the young man asked to stay behind him. The girls agreed with him and so they began their mission. Iko went first and the damage was minus three, which the girl was surprised when the goblin attacked her. Our hero, supporting, said that it was well done. The next moment there was Sylvia's attack, the girl thought it was pretty boring. Our hero thought he had to hurry up and finish using the rook shooting, they were able to defeat this monster. The young man used a combination of knight shooting and silver general shooting, and two shots were enough to kill the knockout goblin. Sylvia has already managed to clean up the goblin sorcerers. At this moment, addressing the girl, our hero asked if she had finished. All the goblin warlocks were dead. But nothing happened and our hero thought it was strange, because the formation of the team has not yet ended, as he remembered. After killing the boss and his henchmen, everything should have ended immediately. But the corpse of the rolling goblin was supposed to evaporate after a while. At that moment, he realized that everything was very bad, because the goblin who survived was aiming his weapon directly at Yukari. Our hero thought that it was very bad and rushed to the defense of the girl, using the Opo Opo form of fire. The next moment, attacking the goblin, it began to burn. They, the hero, together with Yukari, suddenly found themselves in another place. It was blowing away the dungeon, why a Sisparna, so-called, all because of the magic of random teleportation, which goblins can use right before death. Random teleportation is a spell that forcibly teleports a target to a random location up to 4 kilometers away from the battlefield, if he is thrown out of the dungeon to another place against his will. Once on the Mobian Wiki, a well-known online encyclopedia, which was the first resource for the exchange of knowledge between players, a topic appeared about the case of a very distant teleportation from Asia, and its content was amazing. It is expected that random teleportation will move him only 4 kilometers from there. But surprisingly this user was teleported 255 kilometers from this place. The point is that if during the evaporation of the corpses of a knockout goblin, the goblin sorcerer uses random teleportation, touching the corpse instead of moving, it seems any point from 4 to 255 kilometers from the dungeon. It was a terribly strange case. In teleporting spells, the location of movement depends on the mana expended at that moment. Consequently, the system will move the hero as far as mana is enough. Since the place of teleportation random teleportation of goblins is unknown, whether the hero gave the knockout goblin to spend at least a little mana, it will end up teleporting the player 255 kilometers from there. And the young man completely forgot about this detail, and all because of the fact that the pumped players do not follow the dungeon of the third rank, where only beginners go. Our hero understood that it was bad, looking at the sea and the beach in front of him. Yukari, standing next to our hero, was also surprised at where they ended up. Yukari was very surprised, and the young man asked her not to worry. The goblin just teleported them. After hearing about teleportation, Yukari asked again, despite looking askance at our hero. The same one reported that most likely the goblin teleported them about 255 kilometers from there. Seeing the look of the girl, our hero thought that this is the way it is and he will have to put up with it. At that moment, they received a notification that they had created a group. It looks like the goblin mage died in the end. Wherever our heroes were, while they were in the group, one of the group perks would be available to them. It was open communication. Our heroes have a group chat. Turning to Sylvia, our hero asked if they had heard him and Sylvia said that the young man was a fool, and asked where they had disappeared to and if they were okay. The young man reported that everything was fine, they were just teleported away from them. 
Now they will be coming back and ask to stay in Peho City and wait. Turning to Sylvia and Iko, Sylvia said that they would cope, asking how long it was to wait for our heroes because they had to hurry. The young man reported that he thought it was about 6 minutes 7 days. They had a vacation for this time and invited the girls to have fun, saying that they would see each other again. Sylvia also told the young man to wait a minute, but the next moment he blacked out. Yukari, hearing the conversation, asked if they were really that far away. The young man reported that it was natural. It was pointless to doubt it. If you think about it, he was stuck here alone with Yukari for a week. You would like to try to reveal her soul during this time. If you decide that they are on the coast 255 kilometers from the dungeon, then you can understand that they are now in the southeast. In this case, if they go north along the coast, they will reach the city of Kula. The distance from this city to Peho is about a day's journey by horse, and from here to Kula is about five days on foot. At that moment they were walking along the beach and Yukari, addressing the young man, said that it looked like the young man was already familiar with this situation. Our hero, walking ahead of her, asked if the girl couldn't believe it, but she said that wasn't the point. Then our hero asked why she was so calm, but she reported that she was born that way and apologized to the young man. This answer made our hero very angry, because it was Yukari who didn't even know how to portray emotions and thinking about what she would grab from him, because he couldn't do it anymore. He will have to change the original plan a little. He has no other choice but to force Yukari to show his real emotions. Our hero, addressing Yukari, reported that since their first meeting, she seemed to be kept under a shell. Hearing this, the girl asked in surprise what he was talking about. Then the hero again asked what secret she so desperately wanted to hide. The girl calmly replied that everyone has a few things from the past that they would like not to tell anyone. Our hero asked if this even concerned the relation of a slave and a master, and the girl reported that it was natural. Then second said that in that case, was she really going to behave like a stupid girl, trying not to reveal her past? Hearing this, Yukari looked at our hero and reported that it was so. Our hero thought that she got caught and the girl finally begins to reveal her thoughts. At that moment, I thought that she really admitted that she had behaved like a stupid girl, asking if it was true. The girl said that she was just trying to keep the conversation going. Upon hearing this, the young man reported that it was just amazing 6 now she was nervous. The corners of the girl's lips began to twitch, and she wanted to answer and our hero reported that her lips were beginning to tremble. Did she feel it and seeing how the girl started to get mad, our hero understood that his tactics were working. Yukari's emotions were beginning to overwhelm her. Now they had to approach the topic more importantly. Our hero repeated her words saying that even if the girl told everything, it was pointless so they could just keep silent about the truth. Arbitrarily deciding so and creating walls between them, the girl said that really she thought it would really work. At that moment, Yukari was just looking at our hero in silence. Our hero said that it was a practical rule, but he would take on the whole burden of telling the whole truth. Frankly speaking, he already has a good guess. He managed to find out something last night. The recently executed old lady Lucia Isin. He had already heard about her, and told Yukari to be honest with herself and throw off this burden. It was pointless to keep secrets. The girl at that moment reported that she was hiding them for the sake of someone else, not for her own sake, but for the sake of the kindness of Mrs. Lucia. After hearing this, our hero said that he did not understand, but it seemed to him that she was doing it only for herself. At that moment, Yukari, enraged, turned away from our hero. Our hero thought that it could be said that this mission was successful. He was able to make the girl show her true feelings. He may have gone a little too far, but if he hadn't, the scene of Yukari's feelings would have remained the same. Yukari, at that moment, was thinking about what kind of person our hero was. I repeat the phrase about the fact that he wanted to become number one in the world, thinking that such a superficial person who is trying to entice her by telling this impossible stupid dream does not deserve to be her master. Remembering the last trip to the dungeon, Yukari thought that the young man was sending a magical archer and a little girl to the forefront of the beast while he himself was standing aside. A person passing through a dungeon like this will never be able to become number one in this world. Then she remembered about a random teleportation, a place 255 kilometers away, seven days away from Peho, it was definitely a lie. The man just uses dirty tricks to be alone with her. The girl thought that most likely, having got into such a deserted place with her, he wanted to defile her. Unfortunately, she couldn't resist, she was disgusted by the very idea that she was going to sleep with this man. If that's the case, then maybe she should have just killed herself. But she could not just end the life given by Lady Lucia. Her life was provided by her. But then the day turned to night, and then morning came. 
The young man has not touched her yet. It looks like he was watching their camp all night, and she remained in night surveillance. At this rate she will soon surpass her capabilities. On the morning of three days, she struggled with drowsiness all last night. After two nights without sleep and two days of walking, she felt that she was weakening. The young man did not even touch her last night, quite possibly he was waiting for the moment when she would completely lose her strength, thinking that what a treacherous man he was. Just like yesterday, they only swore all day, whenever they talked, it all ended in swearing. Their relationship with the master's slave had completely deteriorated due to fatigue and she could not doubt, even make the right decision. Our hero thought that Yukari's actions were completely unstable because of her dislike. Next to him, she behaved abnormally, maybe it was just fatigue, but altogether now had an effect. Besides, watching her fiercely trying to protect herself, he was convinced of something. As long as the slave contract existed, he couldn't harm her. There's no way she doesn't know that, which means Yukari has been brainwashed. It is quite possible that this is done in order for her to be careful with her master. The young man thought that the culprit of this was the exact Duchess Lucia who has the ability of brainwashing and she was known to the characters of Mobius, with the nickname Brainwashing Old Woman. There is only one way to dispel her spells, concentration on strong emotions, in a life-threatening situation. In the story of Mobius, a character who was brainwashed by Duchess Lucia was able to get rid of the curse only when his beloved was killed in front of him. Such a nightmare really existed, this magic, which is one and only and which is suitable only for soap operas like this. She is completely different in the real world, thought about whether it was too difficult, but he had no choice but to make the girl show her feelings. Besides, the young man thought that not just feelings, but very strong, in a life-threatening situation. It's damn difficult, but our hero was trying to figure out what he had to do. At this moment, suddenly a young man was pierced with a sword, and some guys grabbed the girl. Yukari realized that she had been captured, and our hero was lying on the ground. Leaving, the guys thought about how much they would be given for the elf, because she looked very special. The partners replied that they would give 40 million on the black market for it, and at that moment our hero was wounded and lying on the ground. The young man realized that they were thieves and realized that their target was Yukari. They were so intoxicated by the idea of a 40 million reward that they didn't even think to collect equipment from his corpse. They thought he was already dead, and therefore they completely forgot about him. But it was obviously impossible to survive after being pierced through the heart, he could agree with that. But even though he was pierced, but the properties of his assembly has a terrible amount of health, so that he was not even half of his health. The act was unforgivable, but the young man saw this as a great opportunity. Yukari thought that he was our hero too slow and just didn't have time to react. For a guy who wanted to become number one in the world, he just died like that. And she will become nothing more than a toy again, and then she will be sold as a sex slave and end her life at the very bottom. Yukari was sick of the thought that this was her fate, however, she did not agree to this, she would never agree with this, even with this guy it was better. The girl couldn't understand why only she had to go through all this. She couldn't take it anymore, she didn't agree, and she couldn't do it anymore. At that moment, her forehead seemed to be electrocuted and then she remembered everything. She remembered the woman who said that from now on Yukari would become her shadow, and had to address her as her mistress. The girl, sitting on her knees in front of Lucia, said that she understood everything, addressing the mistress. She was little when Mrs. Lucia stroked her head. She was uncomfortable with the fact that a bunch of rings in her hand got tangled with her hair, but even so she liked the warmth and hands of her mistress. The woman who became her mother is Mrs. Lucia. The latter, addressing the girl, said that she had to work hard. She had to be useful if she wanted to be part of the Ison family. It was her duty, but the girl was submissive and understood everything. She, who had undergone special training of the assassins of the shadow troops of Lucia, was an inconspicuous shadow novice of Lady Lucia. She was good for nothing but murder. Then, that day, her last words were that she finally came and had to open her forehead to her for a second. Then the girl did not understand what Mrs. Lucia was going to do. The woman said that it would be a good luck charm, a charm that would make her happy. Then the girl lost consciousness. When she woke up, it was all over. The lady was executed for preparing an uprising, and all her services and dark troops were also destroyed. And only she was spared, making one of the slaves in the company of Morris. She thought she was saved. She was saved by Mistress Lucia. Her mistress who respected her, gentle mother, it was Mistress Lucia. At that moment, Yukari realized that this was what it meant that she had been brainwashed. At this moment, several guys were looking at Yukari, saying that she was a very bad person hitting a girl. They started arguing among themselves that it was not necessary to damage the precious goods, but it was all the way it was just the stomach. Because they would not look there then, 
and there were no problems. The girl, lying on the floor, listened to all this, but her thoughts were busy with the fact that all this was just confusion. Thinking of the gentle smile when Lady Lucia smiled and she did it only at the very end, touching her forehead, put her as a mother, the person who created an orphan like her into an assassin. Had she really been her mother, had she forgotten this disgusting life full of blood? And why had she been freed? Why had her memories been erased? The girl asked herself all these questions. Then she began to ask them out loud with tears in her eyes and the guys, seeing this, asked what had happened to her. Was she really completely crazy? Looking at the crying girl, the guys said. Yukari understood that no one had ever loved her. The only person she clung to was lying to her. At that moment, the guys said that it would be bad if the girl bit off her tongue. It was necessary to shut her up. Maybe it was necessary to tie her with a rope. At that moment, the girl was tied up so that she would not bite her tongue and Yukari continued to lie on the floor, thinking about what she needed to do. Our hero found the house where Yukari was kept and thought that among those entering this hut he noticed five people and a bound Yukari. Two more were standing guard and it was unknown how many of them were inside. The young man thought that it was impossible to hesitate otherwise everything was lost. This magnificent seed of the future blacksmith that he found, he could not lose it. Here, taking out his bow, our hero thought. Releasing arrows, the young man used piercing shooting, night shooting, and combination. At that moment, he injured the two who were guarding the house, they became corpses. The young man killed them. He thought for some time he would not be able to forget this feeling. But now she had time to think and he went to the house. Outside the door, he heard that the guys heard what was happening on the street and came out to check, holding their swords in their hands. Our hero attacked the guys and the guys were not ready for this. The next moment he went into the house, thinking that behind this door the girl should have been there. Opening the door, he saw guys who were not ready for someone to find them and used the fencing of the golden general his sweeping blow effect. At that moment he defeated three. There were still a few who, despite the young man, did not understand who it was. In the next moment, the young man used the bishop's fencing to his effect and a jerk and a powerful stabbing blow, dealing with several more. At that moment, one of the guys was asking what it was and why the young man was so bloodthirsty. At that moment, our hero saw Yukari, who was lying on the floor and crying. All the hostile caution in Yukari's eyes, the brainwashing spell was cancelled. According to him, the young man at that moment was interrupted by a guy who said not to dig in and presented a knife to the girl's throat, saying that the guy quickly threw away his sword. Our hero showed that he threw away his sword, but the next moment the young man was able to attack him without using a sword. Our hero understood that his opponent was too focused on his sword and did not notice the circle of the spell under his feet. The next moment, he was coming at him with a sword, hitting the guy with silver general fencing, water curl shape and magic fencing. Approaching Yukari, he asked if she was okay, untying the girl. At that moment, she looked at the floor with tears in her eyes and the young man, holding out his hand, informed them that they could go from here, otherwise there was a smell of burning. Looking at our hero, she took his hand. At this moment, seeing the beautiful dawn that was rising over the mountains. The young man said that he was sorry because of his carelessness Yukari got into danger. At that moment, he was apologizing to the girl while they were sitting in the woods. The girl also said that it should have been her sincere pity. Our hero did not understand for her actions before, or what she was apologizing for. The girl said that it was so because in fact she wanted to confess, but our hero already knew that she had been brainwashed. The young man reported that most likely it was brainwashing so that the girl would be exactly careful with her mistress. This is the brainwashing effect that Duchess Lucia possessed. The girl did not understand how our hero knew this and the guy said that she could take her time and they could talk along the way. The only thing Yukari told our hero was that for many years she lived as one of the pawns of the assassins of Duchess Lucia. Mistress Lucia adopted her as an orphan and didn't even give her a name. She raised her as a pawn for murder. Our hero realized this by looking at the sad Yukari. She continued her story. The girl said that she was probably brainwashed, that she was happy, that she was glad to be a mercenary for Mrs. Lucia. All these phrases, she constantly repeated to herself, in fact, until she fell into despair. After the attack of these bandits, she idealized her past shadows. The girl thought it was a very stupid misunderstanding, she was brazenly brainwashed. But the real despair came after the spell was cancelled. 
Mistress Lucia had never loved her. The girl fought with tears in her eyes. After all, she had been living a lie all this time. Relying on fictional love, she was not a good hostess, much less a kind mother. Turning to the hero, she asked to be allowed to tell about her silence, and then said that she kept it all quiet because of brainwashing, and the young man asked if the girl meant the execution of Duchess Lucia, and she said that it really was so, because the lady was officially executed for preparing an uprising. But it was an absolute lie that her enemies had prepared. One of them was Prime Minister Balmoro. The young man, hearing this, asked how Yukari found out about it all and the girl reported that she was the shadow of Lady Lucia and her duty was to kill for her and she thought that the young man found out about it. But she was brainwashed because if she had told this information, Lady Lucia would be at a disadvantage. Our hero interrupting the girl asked if she could listen for a second to what he thought about it. And the girl silently just looked at our hero. He reported that she probably thought about it. Nevertheless, addressing Yukari, the young man reported that Lucia Isine definitely loved her. But the girl said that this was impossible, because she had been washed out of all her memories. The young man reported that perhaps this brainwashing was also done to protect her. But the girl did not believe in it, because if so, who would the girl at least have given her a name and would not have raised her as a murderer? The young man reported that unwillingness to give her a name and washing of memories so that she would not tell the truth. All this was for her protection. She created the image of a pitiful slave who was forced to kill with the magic of washing memories. The girl reported that it was not an image, because she really was a miserable slave killer. But the young man said that she was happy, because she was glad to be a slave, at least once. But she had to think about it. Turning to Yukari, our hero reported. But Yukari reported that she had already said that it was just a washing of memories. But our hero was telling her to listen to him carefully now. Did she understand? But the washing of memories on a person can only be used once. Hearing this, Yukari did not understand what our hero was talking about. But the conditions for washing memories in Mobian are the same as in this world. So he felt that something was wrong in this situation and decided to disassemble it. In the case of the brainwashing used on Yukari was to be careful with the new owner, he was sure of it. This meant that she was really happy during her life as a shadow. And Yukari was surprised by this. Our hero thought that his reasoning consisted half of truth and sweet lies. She had to believe it unconditionally. Because now all he wanted to say was that she didn't believe him. However, if the young man was telling the truth, then her life, her love and faith will cease to be a lie. The young man asked Yukari why she should not escape from prison. I repeat, this phrase the girl did not understand what our hero was talking about. The young man thought about it after the washing of memories passed. To put it simply, he meant a loophole. To be more precise, the girl will be able to illegally escape slavery, as a bonus to get rid of the ban on fighting. Morris's company would keep an eye on them, but it didn't matter because there were other important things right now. It was just that the girl had to trust him, because he needed her no matter what. At that moment, Yukari, watching our hero closely, thought that it was ridiculous. In fact, the young man needs to think, just about Morris and said that it was probably a ridiculous joke. Escape from captivity. In other words, the young man wanted to free her from slavery without officially abolishing the magic of slavery. But it was impossible. Otherwise, the slaver's business would not exist. Our hero reported that since the girl decided to escape from prison, she had to trust him. And she reported that of course she was not against it and was obliged to trust him. And in this case our hero reported that with all her strength she had to hit his head. The girl, having heard this, asked if our hero really wanted this, because under the contract she still could not do it. But the young man said that she could and should not have been afraid. Just try to do it as hard as possible, showing where she was supposed to hit. Approaching our hero, she said that she would do it, asking him and warning him that she was going to perform this action. Our hero told her to hit him with all her might. At that moment, the girl hit our hero's head, thinking that she did it, but did not understand how it happened. She understood that the young man was not lying to her, right now it was definitely an attack. Our hero reported that it looks like the girl could. Thinking about it, she couldn't believe it. All that the young man really planned to become number one in this world. And he gave these two with himself to defend the dungeon in order to train both girls who were on his team and this case with teleportation was also true. And this stubborn behavior was in order to remove the washing of memories. Just saying trust him, it was all in order to make a blacksmith out of her. He's doing it for her, he did it all for her. He did it for Yukari, the girl fought at that moment. Standing near the sea, our hero stood in front of Yukari, asking if the girl trusted him. And with tears in her eyes, a little embarrassed, she reported that it was so. It's a matter of time, but she will really trust him. Turning to her master and looking at the young man, she said, 
The plan to remove the spell was successful. Whether the player will strike the slave with his head any spell between them will be dispelled. Does not affect the development of story quests. Maybe because of the absurdity of this rule, no one even tried to fix it. It was considered a minor bug. We can say that this detail was not worth attention at all. Arrived in the port city of Kula, Yukari informed the gentlemen that they were there and finally they arrived. The sea waves could be heard from afar. While the morning breeze knocked him in the face, it was a wonderful time to immerse himself in his thoughts, thinking that did Prime Minister Balmoral really kill Duchess Lucia Isine? Yukari was personally involved in those events, so she's hardly wrong, but he was interested in something else. He felt in his gut that there was something else behind this case, some huge mystery shrouded in darkness. To begin with, Prime Minister Bao is the head of the Order of the First Prince. Given the two-faced nature of the authorities, he was afraid that they could escape punishment for absolutely any misconduct. As for his father, as the king of Bevel Castell, surely this is some selfish old man who puts benefits above everything. However, he had already made sure that there was a difference in this world from Mobius, because in order to become number one in this world, he could not ignore the existence of a king, whom he did not even remember in the original game. In addition, Main, the second prince, is also in the balance. He didn't want his friend to be dragged into this dirty political war. Second was obliged to solve this mystery. It is necessary for the realization of his dream to become number one and so for the next future of the Main. I turned to Yukari, our hero asked what was about this minister about whom she told him and he said that he was being elected with him. Maybe not immediately, but he would definitely come up with something. Yukari said he shouldn't have made such promises. At that moment, he saw the girl's ears turn red. The farming town of Peho. Our heroes reached Sylvia and Iko. Meeting them, Sylvia immediately asked what they had been doing for so long. Did the guys arrange a honeymoon for themselves? With an evil expression on her face, meeting our hero, the girl reported. The young man understood that after a week of separation, her mood still remained the same as at their first meeting, but Iko was different. Rushing into his arms, Iko was very happy to see her master. Well, the young man said that he was really sorry, asking if everything was alright. Sylvia, seeing our hero, asked in what place he was alright, because they had a cavalry of problems. She was almost killed. At that moment she carefully looked at Yukari, who was standing next to our hero and she silently just looked at the girl. Sylvia said that the guy should continue to stand here, because young ladies need to talk on one. After hearing this, our hero did not understand what the girls were going to talk about on the sidelines. Apparently this is the most feminine gossip, about which he had heard so much, watching how the girls talk to each other. Our hero would like to eavesdrop on them, because this is the first time he has seen it live. Talk aside, Yukari reported that her victory was only a matter of time and then Sylvia said that she was impudent, she was happy with the young man long before her. But Yukari said that if she had been with him long before her and had not achieved anything, did it not mean that the young man was not interested in her? Sylvia reported that she refused to even think about it. And our hero, looking at the girls, thought that they probably missed him and that he was very glad that they were able to make friends with Yukari, thinking that it was very nice. Iko was all the same uninteresting and approaching our hero, she asked what their plan was for the dungeon. The young man reported that it was already quite late, so today they would not go on raids and Iko was a little upset. But the young man reported that instead, as was the idea to discuss the raid plan over dinner, grabbing the girl by the hand and they walked ahead and Sylvia and Yukari were still discussing something among themselves. The next moment they came to the place where they lived and again went down to the tavern, where our hero reported that now their priority task would be the extraction of experience. Sylvia asked if it was necessary for Yukari's development. The young man replied that it was so, because they would get experience for Yukari. They needed to complete the path, they would go there until Yukari became a blacksmith. Fortunately, it won't take much time since the dungeons are located in the vicinity of Peho. Yukari asked me to accept her gratitude and deepest apologies for such trouble. Sylvia told her not to worry, everything was fine, and Iko was just repeating after Sylvia. To help the gentleman, Yukari asked if her memory did not let her down, because they had not yet chosen a name for their team and our hero realized that it was true, because of all this fuss, he completely forgot about it. The young man reported that Yukari was right and that it was necessary to choose something. At that moment, Sylvia, having drunk a lot, said that she had an offer. But the young man, seeing this, reported that she was refused, but the girl thought that she did not say anything. Then Yukari said that she would be happy to listen to her. Sylvia reported that it was wonderful that Yukari agreed and started with the fact that she was a knight who had taken a blood oath. But the young man heard what Sylvia was talking about and asked her to be quiet. 
After all, this girl knows something. He couldn't understand why her words were so damn dangerous. Yukari reported that most of them were not knights, so the name would not fit. At this moment, the girl was asking how it was about the name of the knightly order of rebirth, but suddenly our hero gave her a bottle so that she would not talk anymore. Silencing Sylvia, our hero heard that Yukari said that she also had her own version of the name. See in honor of the head of Secondo. Oh in honor of their common goal, another see because of their desire to be the strongest and because they were always waiting for success. The team was supposed to be called Sasu. Our hero, having just heard the name, did not understand what place the girls came up with these names at all, saying that he did not like it and that let Iko choose. But Iko was already in her dreams, because the girl fell asleep. Our hero understood that he would have to come up with something himself, a name that should have been worthy of them. At that moment, Wu came up with the idea that they would become a lightning team. Yukari reported that if they didn't become the best, it would be a rather shameful name. But the young man said that they would cope, he was going to become number one in this world. Somehow, being drunk in the firewood, he randomly chose the most audacious name of their team. Although it sounded like the last excuse, but he really believed that at such moments you need to behave just as audaciously. The next day, our heroes went to the rank 2 dungeon where they had previously fought. The young man thought about how nice it was to be there after all this, especially after a long break. There was a lot of pleasure in this, because he could get tons of experience in this dungeon. At this rate, a month is more than enough for every blacksmith skill in Yukari to reach rank 9. At that moment, watching Yukari, the young man asked what the girl was thinking about and Yukari reported that she just did not expect it to be so fast. Here our hero was pierced by a thought that he had completely forgotten. He hadn't even checked Yukari's stats and skills. Going into the table, he realized that they were terribly lucky. Among all Yukari's skills, the following have reached the rank system. First rank pawn shooting and first knight killer rank. There were two in total, all the others could not even reach the rank system. Looking at the monsters that were defeated, the young man thought that the monsters of the second rank were falling dead before his eyes, as if they had never existed. He would never have thought that he would see something like this live because high-ranked skills made themselves felt. And if they were wondering what their luck was, in Yukari's potential, she gets a lot more experience than he expected, because she almost did not improve her skills. Second reported that if a girl becomes a good blacksmith, she will become one, she can forget about pumping combat skills of rank 2 or even rank 1. Yuudit is eager to explore the world with them, saying that thanks to her, his dream has become much closer. They are getting closer to the goal by leaps and bounds, so he will hope for it. At that moment, the girls were fighting against the monster, and Yukari was standing next to our hero and bowing to the young man. She said that by itself everything would be as he wants. She, too, should have followed the number one path in the world to be worthy of her master, saying that she would become the number one blacksmith in the world. Looking at how Yukari had changed, the young man realized that she used to think these words were a stupid joke, but now she was twice seriously decided to become number one. These are the same words that in the past angered her and made her doubt human strength. This gentle and good-natured smile, just the sight of it was enough for him to be over the moon with happiness, because he was glad that she had become his friend. It's been two weeks since they continued the routine life of Pharma Lipta Facta and for once they got the coveted item. The shield of the stone turtle and everything seemed to be great, but something unexpected happened. Iko was protecting its shield. Then Yukari reported that she wasn't going to steal the shield, she just needed to improve it. Sylvia, referring to Iko, said that the girl was right, even her flame wolf bow became stronger after Yukari improved. These two weeks, Yukari has been pumping the equipment improvement skill from the blacksmith branch, and thanks to this, she has already achieved the fifth rank of this skill. Just starting from the fifth rank of leveling, the chance of improving equipment equipment jumps sharply, access to advanced improvement opens. That is, now her Yukari can improve weapons up to the third final stage. After hearing this, Iko asked if it was true. The girl said that by itself asking if if would give her what she needed. But Iko said she wouldn't do it, thinking that now she was scaring her. Iko was like a cat that didn't want to give away a toy. I wonder if all beastmen had such instincts. They didn't bring it up for a while. There was no time to hurry anyway. The next moment Iko apologized to everyone and said that a similar one had misunderstood everything. She accidentally decided that they wanted to take her one gift from her. Our hero was now almost sure that healthy people have their own instincts. Turning to Yukari, he told her to apply stage 3 with an emphasis on resilience. The girl said that everything would be as our hero wished. The next moment she did this, she gave them the shield. The young man thanked her that he expected less from her. 
The girl reported that it was not so difficult. The young man realized this only a little later, and yet when Yukari was happy or confused, her ears would first turn red and then there would be a barely noticeable tremor. At that moment, Yukari had just such a reaction. Next, our hero gave Iko a shield and hugged his gift. Iko thanked Yukari. Our hero reported that they were changing the dungeon and Sylvia asked why it was. Because now they were passing Liptofata very quickly. Because they were given quite a lot of experience for selling stone turtle shields and were able to earn several dozen million SL. The young man reported that there are three reasons for this. Firstly, in a new place and they will get more experience than here, Sylvia agreed. Secondly, before creating equipment for new monsters, the hand from which the young man wanted to make new equipment will fall. And here Sylvia also agreed and because of the boss of the next dungeon, tons of mithril will fall. And from mithril, the equipment necessary for intermediate and advanced players is created. If they could get this equipment, then he didn't see the point of not doing it. In any case, it would be better than the armor in which, but they also walked now and in three, they will receive so many times more gold. The next moment, listening to him, Sylvia began to agree, and then talked about him stopping at this thought. They will earn even more money, and the young man said that he decided that they would save for a house. Hearing about the house, all the girls were surprised and happy at the same time. The young man reported that they would choose an incredible mansion in the suburbs of the capital and use it as a base for the speedy team. In his previous life, he did not have a chance to dive into the login system with property, but in this world it will be useful, and if he decided to distract himself from the main tasks, he counted on a magnificent mansion. The young man informed the girls that their goal would be 50 million yen, and they would achieve, not this figure with the help of Jade Alchemy, asking if there were any questions. Both girls raised their hands, and our hero reported that Sylvia was one and then the girl said that why did they need 50 billion SL? The young man reported that everything was quite simple. The most expensive estate in the capital cost about 25 billion, therefore, they needed a house two times more expensive. The logic of the young man was that if there are the most expensive possessions worth 25 billion, then his house will not be the number one price tag in the world, until it becomes at least twice as expensive. Then Yukari asked him questions and the girl asked what mithril was, the young man said that it was a good question. Mithril ore is extracted from the mithril golem the boss of the dungeon of rank 2 praline. It is located in the vicinity of the Kuznetsk city black gold, where they will go. Yukari, with the help of smelting and purification skills, will be able to make pure mithril from ore, and then use the fabrication she will mix it with iron and they will get with smooth mithril. After hearing about the mithril alloy, the young man said that, as he said, he gets it when combining pure mithril and iron in a ratio of 1 to 20. It is an extremely durable valuable metal. At that moment, Sylvia turned to him and said that she was wondering if the dungeon praline has not been passed yet. Then how does Second San only know about it? Our hero realized that he screwed up here, thinking about what they needed to do, just answer her nothing, justify himself, tell the truth, wondering what he would need to come from this. Sylvia reported that even at the first meeting she noticed this awareness, saying that the young man has reasons to know this, the girl said. The young man thought to himself that she was right for a reason, she knew all this and it's a damn long story, a reason that was hard to believe in principle, even if he found out that this was not the case. He could not get rid of the fear that he would not be accepted. Probably felt it because of the guilt hidden deep inside him and if so, to the fact that he just accept himself and tell this truth, but then realized that he could not. His very existence was far beyond the understanding of these girls. People are afraid of the unknown, which is why he could not tell them about it and felt that it only distanced him from the goal of becoming number one in the world. At that moment, Sylvia was telling the young man that she trusted him, so if he didn't mind telling him about himself, she would accept any truth whatever it turned out to be. The young man understood that Sylvia was strong, she had enough stars and wanted the truth, even if she destroyed everything they had now. A girl with a brave and straightforward heart, that's what her family is, she owns so many things that are inaccessible to him in a pure brave strong and just heart, something that he will never have. The young man apologized to the whole saying that he would never be able to reveal his secret to anyone. Our hero simply avoided the answer, but decided that from this, what would become his secret, which could not be disclosed under any circumstances and yet he would not be himself, told about this secret. In this reality, if he does not avoid answers when it is necessary, he will never return to the path of number one in the world. What he was like before, the young man reported that if he lied, if they promised that he would tell about it, so that this secret that he would take with him to the grave, so he apologized to her. Sylvia reported that she didn't mind anyway. 
However, if it ever tormented him, he could not be afraid to cancel his promise about the grave and tell her about it. Our hero understood that Sylvia was a nice girl. It came from somewhere in the depths of his heart. Looking at the girl's smile at this moment, our hero reasoned. The city of blacksmiths, bad gold. Our hero, seeing a city nearby, said that as soon as he found a buyer for the mithril alloy, he would immediately head to Praline. One of the men said that the guys probably scoffed and the safe supply of mithril ingots is absolutely impossible. The following said they didn't have joke times. Our heroes bypassed a lot of good potential buyers, but they were not given the green light in one place. That's how it all turned out, and no doubt when he occasionally thought that if some stranger appeared and told him that he would buy the whole cartoon, he would readily trust him. Our hero, addressing Yukari, asked how she thought he should do. Yukari reported what she thought they should have done first. One swift raid of the dungeon versus to check the situation and his reputation. If they demonstrate their potential, then they will probably gain trust. So he understood that a guild of adventurers was needed, and Yukari noted that this was so. Our hero really did not want this, because from his past life there were only bad memories from adventurers. Speaking of whether the girl could not come up with another method, but she reported that she didn't have anything concrete at that moment. He turned to Sylvia and Iko. The girls didn't know anything either, because it looks like these two also had no idea. Our hero asked what would happen if they did not go on a raid without registering in the guild. Yukari reported that in this case everything becomes more complicated. Because if you go on a raid without registration, you didn't even imagine what they could do. They could put pressure on their clients and interfere in business or even send assassins. Is there not as well as he knows the guild? It was all quite possible. Perhaps remembering his past life, our hero thought because he believed there was no choice. He had to go to the adventurer's guild after they found a place to sleep. Seeing one of the taverns, the young man, going inside, said that they would like to register. When she saw the girl in front of her and saw our hero there, smiling at him, she said that she was very grateful that the young man came here. The next moment they registered, and our hero saw the guild cards. On his guild card are the infectious numbers of adventurers and the passport for the guild. On his guild card, the group and professional ranks are listed as F. The ranks rise from F to A, which means that he is of the lowest rank. At this moment, the girl was asking if the guys wanted a beginner adventurer's manual or a guide to their classes. The young man refused, then she thanked him for his patronage. The young man was infuriated that they could get into Praline right away, and infuriated that he was refused even the sale of the mithril alloy. It infuriated him that he had registered with the Adventurer's Guild, with whom he did not want to have nothing to do, and it infuriated him that he had the rank of F. At that moment, someone was talking about a dark elf walking with this peasant. One of the men pointed his finger at our hero, asked if they were newbies, saying that he would teach them. But most of all our hero was infuriated that he needed to listen to these people, why he hated the guild. The young man standing in front of our hero reported that he was naturally a beginner and should have been grateful. Our hero reported that he must have looked like a complete loser. It seems that his opponent thought that he was lucky with a weakling like him, with whom a bunch of girls go and that he could use the training of a beginner to easily pluck him. And therefore the only bully, the dumbass decided to shake his fat here, our hero informed his to the enemy. After hearing all this, the opponent said that the guy really ran into a fight. The young man reported that his opponent was mistaken but he was a hardened criminal. But he did not think that it was his fault, rather the adventurer's guild was to blame for neglecting guys like him. Teachers should be far-sighted even if their students are hopeless, they need to be more attentive. The enemy realized that our hero was ignoring him and informed him that the guy would stop doing it. Our hero looked at him with his contemptible gaze and reported that he was a vile mouse and told him to get lost, because he also could not protect himself. The guy heard what our hero was saying and started attacking him. The young man thought it was sad, because he was open everywhere and he could defeat him at any moment at that moment. Iko went on the attack, which jumped forward, protecting our hero. At this moment, the opponent hit the girl's head and after beating him off, Iko just looked at him, and the big guy jumped in front of her on two legs, saying that his arm was very sore. The next moment, three guys started attacking our hero, but at that moment Yukari intervened and tied them up, and the guys could not move. The girl informed our hero that she had tied them up for safety by contacting the master. Sylvia, appearing in front of them, said that there seemed to be no role for her here. Our hero, looking at the girl, did not understand what she wanted, aiming her bow in this small room and the girl said that the kick of the bow of the fire wolf, which she practiced, looked like this. The next moment, our heroes left the guild. 
The young man walked in front, and behind him were his friends. At that moment, watching his legs, our hero realized that he was trembling and was he really afraid of this giant. But then he thought about how he was scared of himself. If he let himself lose his temper and fought them, if he wasn't careful, it would be a massacre. The young man thought that if he defeated someone, it would not be killing the player, but killing. This is a game. He learned that not until this moment he did not understand it. The next moment they returned home and our hero, resting in his room, looked at the ceiling, thinking that becoming the absolute flawless number one in the world was probably going to be some of the degree difficult. Having gathered up, our faithful hero informed his girlfriends that he thought they should have gone to Praline today. The girls looked at our hero, then Yukari one reported that she understood everything, but even with her she would go on her own. Most likely the guild of blacksmiths would not approve of this, to which our hero did not understand why. Dungeon raids are conducted by higher groups less organized on a regular basis like mass raids conducted by adventurer guilds. Moreover, if some completely unfamiliar group claims that they are going there on their own, it will look like a lie, our hero finished here. Even if they poke their noses with mithril ingots, our hero asked and the girl said that mithril falls on not only from the boss, Praline, but even with ordinary monsters, our hero did not understand, then how about collecting tons of mithril before the end of the week? He informed her that they could certainly do these weeks, she forgot about this opportunity, as it looked too strange. The girl said that in this case there is an opportunity to skip a massive raid and make a deal with the Guild of Blacksmiths. However, whether the Adventurers Guild would turn a blind eye to the invasion, our hero understood everything. At this point, the service has passed, then why don't they join the massive raid and let Mr. Two show all his rage? The boys reported that if only they would agree to accept Group F, and the girl said that it was a good remark. Our hero, thinking about it, thought that wars from the kingdom would gather for mass raids into this undefeated dungeon, and even if they conquered it with their own hands, no one would believe them, so besides, they would also make them enemies. Our hero realized that there was no way out. Yukari reported that they had to help the adventurers guild with all their might. She thought it was the best plan to get into the future of mass raids. Our city was thinking how many months it was supposed to take. He couldn't motivate himself all the time, and all because he only thought about it as a game. I appeal to Yukari, I asked him to say purely theoretically, if his rank in adventurers was greater, they could join mass raids if he conquered it himself, the future rank A, would they recognize it? The girl said that a lot of extreme cases are possible for such, however, if he aspired to become an a rank and would it not be more effective to constantly contribute to earn the right to participate in mass raids? The young man said that he named the best method. After hearing about the best method, our hero began to think that in the past, when he played in Mobian, he was as useless as Zero. Here the method of the hacking bomber, addressing the girls, he informed them that they needed to hurry to the Praline dungeon. 